Welcome to three hours of the very best entitled parent stories of the year Starting with this crazy one which was in the news just a week ago Chinese parents abandon their two-year-old daughter then sue her for parental maintenance After a woman in china refused to buy her younger brother an apartment Her estranged parents filed a lawsuit for 500,000 yuan approximately $71,000 in parental maintenance The woman 29 year old zhang from guangzhou of southern china was abandoned by her biological parents when she was two years old Old and has no relationship with them. She was reportedly abandoned as her biological parents could not financially support her and they rarely contacted her throughout her life. Zhang was raised by her father's sister and considers her aunt's family to be her real biological family. When Zhang recently used her savings to buy her cousin an apartment, her biological parents reappeared in her life and reportedly demanded that she buy her biological brother an apartment as well. After Zhang refused, her estranged parents filed a lawsuit against her for 500,000 yuan in parental maintenance. The court ruled that although Zhang is not obligated to buy her brother an apartment, she must negotiate the amount with her parents and pay the parental maintenance fee. Under the Civil Code of China, adult children have a legal obligation to support their parents regardless of estrangement or abandonment. Yeah, that is a law that needs to be changed immediately. How is that's still a thing your parents are allowed to abandon you when you're two years old with no repercussions yet you have to support them in their later life why they didn't support you at all they left you to die kid with toy bow and arrow sees my drone flying and decides to shoot it so a while after my last post about the angry 10 year old i didn't go to the park for a couple of months because I was afraid I was gonna get recognized by the kid and I'm only five years older than him Yeah, guys, uh, not too sure what's going on here But it sounds like there might be some previous between OP and this kid now I'm about five foot four and the kid is five foot two so he can probably beat me up So I didn't go for months until recently. I got my drone now I knew I couldn't fly my drone at my house since there are active sprinklers and I didn't want my new drone to get wet and not work anymore so I decided, you know, maybe they forgot about me. And I went to the park. Now, when I got there, I saw people just chilling and a mother of two. Now, one of the kids seemed nice, but the other seemed, well, entitled. The entitled kid had a toy bow and arrow, and the nice kid only had his phone and headphones and was about the same age as me. The entitled kid was probably around nine years old. So I start flying my drone, and the nice kid came over to me and asked if he could fly. I told him the basics and he was actually pretty good at it. So when he gave it back for me to fly, his entitled brother came over and said, Hey, buttholes, what in the living heck is that? I was surprised because I'd never seen a nine-year-old curse. Now, I know they are common today from many posts on Reddit, but I'd never seen one in person. And I'm being serious because my family is Christian and doesn't allow us to curse. I answered the entitled kid and then told his nice brother. The nice kid said to his brother, it's a drone. And who is that? I asked. The nice kid sighed and said, ah, it's my little brother. He then said to his brother, bro, we told you, you can't curse. But the kid then proceeded to say and also stick the bird out. I don't give a frick, you little female dogs. I was shocked and I said to the nice kid that we could just go and find another spot if he wanted and he agreed So over we went by the swings and we were flying the drone again Now when I load the drone about six feet into the air out of nowhere a wooden arrow with a rubber tip Hit it and damaged two of the four propellers I was sad and mad at the same time, but I didn't do anything the nice kid looked around and saw his brother with the bow, who said, Bullseye, idiots. The nice kid went and hit his brother with a smack. He then cried, of course, and ran to his entitled mum. And the nice kid said to me, Oh boy, she's gonna do it again. Do what? I said. Then the entitled mum stormed towards me and the nice kid and said, Who smacked my angel? The kid admitted to his mother that it was him and his mum actually denied it because the entitled kid then said, No, it was him. He was pointing at me while frantically crying to his mum. Now she believed him and said, Why would you do that? You should go to heck. I was sad because as a child, my parents always encouraged me to do good deeds and not go to hell. Remember, my parents are, of course, Christian. So I immediately, in rage, start to give them a piece of my mind. 
and say, you know what? That angel of yours looks like he's losing brain cells every second, making him dumber and dumber like you. You look like a worn out tire with almost no purpose but to mess everyone's day up. Believing your angel's little lies only makes you look dumber and more entitled. Apart from your nice kid here, he's the only one that has shown any respect to me today. And I don't even know him. He's got more manners and more intelligence than you and your son. Then I walk away and the nice kid actually followed me. I told him, look, sorry if I offended his mum and his brother or even if I offended him, but he said they deserved it. But then the entitled kid ran over, tackled me and took my drone over to his entitled mother who then said, this belongs to my kid. He deserves it more than you do. And he was absolutely ecstatic saying, yay, my very own drone. The entitled mum gave it to him and he ran off playing with it like a toy airplane, waving it around and throwing it like a glider. But he turned it on. So when he threw it up in the air, I actually made it fly up even higher. Now it was hard to control because of the bent and broken propellers, but I got it back to me and put it back in my backpack. I waved to the nice kid goodbye and hopped on my bike, looking back at the entitled mum and the entitled kid. They looked shocked and just didn't expect it. When I got home, I looked into the drone package and saw four spare propellers and fixed it. This all happened two days ago. Me and the nice kid have actually become friends since, and I don't really know what happened to the entitled kid or the entitled mum. I never really bothered to ask because I don't want to deal with them anymore. And there we go. That is the end of that story. Honestly, like a drone is one of the coolest things that you can get these days. It's, do you not think? Do any of you have a drone, by the way, that are watching right now? If you do, I'm so jealous of you. I've been thinking myself of getting a drone for the longest time, but I know obviously it's quite risky flying over maybe private pieces of land. You have to be very careful what you do with it. And obviously you don't want to, you know, take videos of people that you know, aren't aware of that sort of stuff. So you've got to be a bit careful. Um, and for OP in this story, he had to be extra careful because of these entitled people. I mean, come on, shooting down your drone drone for no reason i know he's just a kid and all but why but honestly yeah uh, some of the best like cinematic shots that i've seen even in youtube videos are often shot with drones it looks so sick let me know should i buy one i'm not really sure how i could use it for this channel but something else who knows i think it'll be a fun purchase now moving on to our second story of today's episode entitled mum flags me down at my apartment complex for trespassing my girlfriend and i recently moved into a new apartment in one of the better neighborhoods in my country we have an abandoned house out back owned by the landlord's brother and the house has a dock that the tenants of my apartment complex are able to use whenever so we've had a couple of run-ins with random people at this point Now, my friends, who are black, have been waiting in their car for me and been approached by this one entitled mum, asking them what they're doing here and how this is private property and if they don't move on, she's going to call the police. For context, she does not live in this area and it is private property, but more on that later. Now, I walk outside while they are talking and call them into my apartment without even acknowledging the entitled mum's existence. Nothing else came of that that time, but just to preface the next bit, I felt that first encounter was important. So that happened a few months ago. And today, just about 20 minutes ago now, I run into this woman again. In the past, I'd had a rundown car that we just got rid of, and I've now got a new one, but people in the area won't recognize it as mine yet. So I drove home and see the same entitled mum and her two kids. I like to go down to the dock from time to time to relax and smoke. So I park my car in my spot and walk towards the dock. The entitled mum sees me and meets me halfway. Excuse me, what are you doing here? Don't you know this is private property? You can't be here. I explained to the woman that I live here in the apartments right behind me, but she says, no, you don't. I know everyone who lives here. Okay, well, I moved in six months ago now, and I know for a fact that you don't live here. So may I ask what you are doing here? She tells me she knows the owner and she's got a right to be there. And again, assures me that she knows that I don't live here. So I just say, okay, whatever you say, and walk back to my place. She follows me, and as I walk up my steps, excuse me, why are you not getting in your car? Should I call the police? I ignore her and go to open my back door. Forgetting I'd lock the deadbolts, I say, oh no, I forgot to myself. And she cuts me off from walking around the front. I just witnessed you trying to break into a house. I'm calling the police. 
At this point, I'm annoyed because I just want to go and smoke and relax. So I tell her, you know what, just do it. She calls. And me being the annoyed, petty person I am, I stand there the whole time waiting patiently for them to arrive. They show up and ask what's wrong. She explains how I came to a private property and tried to use her dock and then tried to break into someone's home. I tell the officer that's talking to me to follow me around the front so I can unlock my door and show her that I live here. As we walk, I hear the entitled mum shouting about me being a thief and why haven't I been handcuffed already? We walk around the front and I unlock the door. It's a straight walk from my front to back door, so I walk through my house and show the officer that I do in fact live here. I open the deadbolt and slowly open the back door with the biggest grin on my face as the entitled mum, who of course is still there, just stares at me and goes red. She shouts at the officer that I must have done something to get in, but the officer laughs her off, talks to his partner, and after a few minutes, they tell her to go back to what she was doing, as I obviously should be here. Now, I point out in this moment that the entitled mum herself doesn't live here, and the only places besides my complex is abandoned, and I know who the owner is. Her and the officers walk back to her car by the dock steps about 50 feet away. I can't hear anything, obviously, so bummer there. But after about 10 minutes, the cops leave. And a few minutes after that, I hear a car speeding down the road and a loud F you as it goes past. Oh, great story again. I mean, it's just walking through your own house or the back door and then going, yeah, surprise, mother. I'm here. That's what you should have done anyway. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, seriously, like, who is this woman? What is she doing? Does she even live there? Is she even in this apartment? The fact that you've said to the officers, she doesn't live here. She's on my private property. And the fact that she's got in her car and left. I'm just confused as to why she's even there in the first place. Ultimately, like, it's not her land. Why is she getting involved? It doesn't matter. Get your big old nose out of it. And that's easy for me to say. Um, but yeah, great story. Great ending. Love it. Parents insist I tutor their child in person, knowingly expose me to COVID. I am a tutor. Now, most of my work has remained virtual, even as the pandemic lifts for the sake of client's convenience. However, some parents prefer to return to in-person. Once I was fully vaccinated, I'm quite a bit older, so I was towards the front of the line, I was perfectly happy to return to in-person sessions with those who preferred them. I work with one family who can be a bit prickly regarding public health measures. They wouldn't have their son do virtual sessions with me. Certain he wasn't learning anything and pressured me quite hard, but unsuccessfully, to return to in-person before a vaccine was available. They're otherwise fine though. Although, to be fair, their son wouldn't have needed tutoring at all had his parents not rammed him into a gifted program he really isn't suited for. But anyways, the first few sessions back were all fine and good. But then one day, I went in and noticed the father of the family had a pretty severe cough. I asked if all was well and he insisted it was fine and I should come in. He even tried to shake my hand with his cough despite all we now know. Well, whatever. I was in a separate room with the son, so I figured it was fine enough. I wouldn't be there all too long. I opened a window. So the kid and I were working away, but I kept hearing this guy really going at it coughing and I was pretty uncomfortable. I offer virtual sessions for precisely this reason. And I even specifically have clients sign saying they will reschedule if they or their child are exhibiting signs of illness. I had that before the pandemic. When my student mentioned his dad had returned from a trip to see a big game about two weeks ago, I was done. I excused myself early and made up some bogus excuse about a burst pipe at home. I didn't want to have the confrontation about the real reason in front of the students. I headed back and planned to schedule a call with the parents. Since a matter as sensitive as do this again and our professional relationship is over didn't seem appropriate just for email. The call went about how you'd expect. They were all, you want to live your life in fear? Go ahead. But we're not paying for the session you walked out on and so forth. About a week and a half after that initial encounter, a health department worker contacted me to inform me I had been exposed to COVID-19. They couldn't tell me who, but I'm absolutely sure it was this guy. The worst part is to trigger a contact trace in our state, you have to have tested positive. So he knew he had it and exposed me 
and chose not to call, leaving who knows how many days for me to infect my loved ones and other clients while he just sat on his butt. Thankfully, because I'm fully vaccinated, I seem to have been spared. If he had not felt entitled to in-person sessions while sick, I wouldn't have had the tremendous scare, but I'm just grateful I've not caught it. It's been a week now and so far so good. Though props to my health department, they follow up like clockwork. I terminated our business relationship in writing and their response was, you're discriminating against us for our beliefs? What, our son doesn't deserve an education as much as the scientists? We'll find a better teacher than you, but less money and so forth. Much of the email was not spelled or formatted correctly, so that should tell you something. Stay safe out there, people. Get vaccinated. You never know who you're working with. I mean, seriously, uh, just it's beyond belief. This guy, I just, I, 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 speechless, absolutely speechless. You and me, we both know, right? How serious this pandemic is. How many millions of people now have died. How much anxiety and stress, and you know, illness it causes amongst people. It's been the worst thing that's ever happened in my life. Yet this guy just doesn't care that he's got it. Doesn't care that he's inviting you, OP into his home inside oh my god it's unbelievable i I don't think i've ever ever come across somebody as as ridiculous as this i mean seriously what happened if this guy had given it to you say you hadn't been fortunate enough to get both vaccines yet he'd given it to you you'd passed it on to your elderly parents or whatever and you know that could have literally been tragic it could have been you know fatal it's it's absolutely mental I, i genuinely believe there should be some sort of criminal charge i mean in england i think the, the, the problem is that you're, you're, yeah, he's inviting you into his home. So I'm not sure what you could really do about that. But knowing that you have COVID or really suspecting that you do, at least having symptoms and still mingling with other people, inviting them into your home, that should be, that should, you know, be illegal because that ultimately, as I said, could end up costing people lives. Guys, I might as well give you a little update on my COVID situation as well. A lot of you have been asking about it in the comments. Thank you for looking out for me. I do appreciate it. Um, I'm pretty much all good now. My dad as well, fortunately, seems to be all good. Um, A little bit of fatigue, but you know, that's kind of standard. And uh, yeah, thankfully, we got off very lightly in the end, to be completely honest. But other people who are perhaps a little bit older or, you know, have underlying health conditions are, are getting absolutely screwed by this. So the fact that this guy is not taking it seriously at all and is inviting you into his home when he has symptoms is unbelievable. Believable. Now moving on to our next story. Entitled mum dislikes my signature and demands I change it. I am a high school principal and for better or worse, that means signing a lot of documents. I mean a lot. Report cards, IEPs, reports, requests, diplomas, the list is endless. Over the years, I've developed a signature that is easy to write, distinctive and kind of hard to read. In other words, it's a scrawl. Well, recently, I sent home registration papers to a new parent, whose teenager will be entering the school in September. They included a cover letter signed by me. The next day, there was a message on our school's voicemail from the parents. Hi, I just received the registration package from the school and I had a question about the letter that came with it. It says it's from the principal, but I can't read his signature. Now, note that under my signature is my name and title printed proudly in 12 point times New Roman. The entitled mum continued. Can someone get back to me about this? My secretary called back and the entitled mum demanded to speak to me personally. Hi there, principal speaking. How can I help you? Yeah, I received your letter with the registration package. I was a little confused because I couldn't read your signature. Confused? Uh, how? It was from me. I know, but I couldn't read your signature, so... At this point, I'm quietly reflecting. You know, I don't want to make a big deal out of it, but I don't think it's okay to have a signature people can't read. Uh, I'm not sure I understand the concern. The letter is from me, on school letterhead, with my name and title clearly displayed. Yeah, but I can't read the signature. I think it needs to be clearer so that, you know, uh, people can read it. I was then thoughtfully silent. I think you need to change it. Okay, well, thanks for calling. If you're having any difficulty with the registration papers themselves, you can talk to our guidance secretary. Well, are you going to fix it? Fix it? My signature? Yeah, I think you need to change it. Uh, okay, thanks. Uh, if you need assistance, I'll pass your call to guidance. Bye now. 
Then I just hung up. A little while later, I received an email from the entitled mum with suggested examples of what she wanted my signature to be. I thoughtfully deleted it. Wait, so you're telling me she actually, you know, got a pen and paper out and was actively giving you some ideas, like, I don't know, graphic designer saying, yeah, here are some concepts of what could be a, a much better signature than your scrawly piece of trash. The whole point of a signature, it, it, like, it doesn't have to be amazing, does it? I know it's like to, to prove that it's you and to verify that it's you, but... As a, as a principal, signing loads of stuff, you don't want something that is like, takes time to do or is, you know, really long and formal. Just a little scroll is fine. As OP said, his name is there. The school letterhead is a, is a, is a template. It's there. You know who it is. But no, this woman was uh, was so keen to, to, to make sure that he improved his signature that she probably spent a long time drawing out potential exam. I mean, it's so funny. I just, <laughs> what goes through her mind to say, you know what, I'm going to help this principal out. Let me get my pen and paper out and, you know, mock up some examples. Incredible scenes. And now moving on to our final story of today's episode. Another entitled parent doesn't tell me about the baby. I used to do some babysitting and nannying work as a teenager for extra cash. Most of my regulars were lovely, but you get the odd one. I was a very popular babysitter in the area and would happily work with very short notice. So I regularly got calls from parents who'd been given my number, needing a babysitter within a few hours. This meant that when I got a call from a parent of a classmate of one of my regulars kids needing a babysitter that evening, it wasn't that surprising and I happily accepted. The referral came from one of my favorite regulars, so I had no initial concerns. First red flag was they had a huge Rhodesian Ridgeback dog, which was rather protective of his house. But I'm good with dogs and we got on pretty well after a small introduction. Unexpected, but fine. Heads up guys, please warn people if a rather protective dog is wandering the property. Yeah, personally, I would just like to know if there was a, you know, a large protective dog on a property I was going to for the first time. It would be nice to know. It was about 5 p.m. at this point. So I go through the usual asking for rules. Does their nine-year-old son need dinner, bedtime, etc.? Essentially, the answer was, we'll be back around 2 a.m. There are zero rules. The kid will pick something from the cupboards and just let him have whatever he wants. No bedtime, no rules on what shows he could watch. The nine-year-old wanted to watch South Park, which is why I checked this rule repeatedly, but apparently it was all good for him to binge watch that all evening. It was a relatively uneventful evening. The kid was surprisingly well behaved, considering they had no boundaries, until the parents got home. The parents get back around 2 a.m., nine hours after they left. Then the wife went upstairs and came back down with a baby. I had not been informed that there was a baby upstairs the entire time I'd been there. They just shut it in its bedroom and not thought to tell me because it wouldn't need anything. So no big deal. What the heck? Even if they don't need anything. I mean, what baby sleeps through nine hours without a peep? I genuinely heard nothing all night and was on alert knowing the dog was around as I didn't 100% trust it. If there was an emergency, I wouldn't have known to get the baby out of the house. It turns out they didn't want to tell me because they were concerned I'd charge extra for two kids. I didn't. It was a flat rate up to three kids. I just took my money and left. I told my mum, who worked for the school their kids went to. There were other safeguarding issues, it turns out, so this went on the reported list there. Not long after, they left the country with no warning. This isn't even the only time a parent has surprised dumped their baby on me. Apparently, I just look like I'll be cool with it. Again, guys, I'm absolutely lost for words because, <laughs> as OP says, what if there was a fire in the house? She would have got the kid out, herself out, maybe even the dog out, um, and they would have been on their way, all safe and sound. No, because a baby would be dead upstairs. How can you not? Oh, my. Oh, it's so bad. It's so bad. Look, this is probably like quite a dark thing to say, but ultimately at some point, I really wish that people like this kind of, you know, get taught a lesson. Obviously, I don't want their baby to die, but a less severe form of punishment to wake themselves up and to understand and get some sort of common sense would not go amiss because seriously, any small fire that, you know, is upstairs or whatever, maybe in the baby's bed, anything could have happened. The baby could have, you know, got caught up in its cot or sheet or whatever. Ah, oh, it's, it's unbelievable. It really, really is. First time flying first class, ruined by a Karen. So we're heading out for a family vacation. 
flying first class for the first time. Our group has seven of the eight seats adjacent to the cockpit, with one rando seated amongst us. And boy, did we find a Karen. Right from the get-go, Karen made her presence known. We board with my father-in-law, who is in a wheelchair, to find that for some reason, this lady boards the plane along with the passengers that need additional time to board. But she seems to be moving around just fine. It seems her motivation to do so was to pack not only her overhead compartments with her multitude of carry-on items, but she also needs to use all of mine and half of someone else's too. Okay, fine, whatever, we can deal with it. Then the flight gets delayed for being short crew and Karen immediately starts demanding wine before we even leave the ground. As soon as the stewardess tells her no and walks off, she starts complaining to us about how trashy first class is with this airline. Now at this point, I'm already thinking, Jesus, can you please just shut the heck up already? Then comes the inevitable, we can just leave without the crew member, right? Apparently, she wasn't paying attention because the missing crew was the freaking pilots. We were actually released back out to the terminal for a bit to stretch since the delay was so long. But when we return to our seats, we find that my daughter's seat was occupied by Karen's friend who was flying economy. After standing around and clearing our throats several times to try and get their attention, it becomes obvious they have no awareness of anyone outside their bubble. Frickin' finally, after both myself, my daughter, and my mother-in-law all asked them to clear out, they finally acknowledge that they're in someone else's seats. After all of this, we eventually get up in the air. Cue Karen slamming glasses of wine. After the third glass, she's obviously already drunk as heck because she then dumped the entire fourth glass of wine on my teenage daughter and didn't even freaking acknowledge that she'd done it. No sorry, no here's a napkin. She just immediately started demanding another drink from the flight attendant. All the while, she's keeping her mask down while she is drinking, as she's entitled to do so, but the second I take mine off to drink some water, this female dog grabs my arm and starts demanding that I put my mask back on. Are you freaking serious? You're gonna complain about a mask, but it's totally okay touching strangers? Okay, Karen. At this point, I finally tell the stewardess about everything and they stop serving her. But she still spends the rest of the trip complaining about how trashy this airline is and trying to talk to my daughter the entire time, who is legitimately worried this moron is going to puke on her. Poor kid. OP, honestly, I'm so sorry for your first experience in first class to be as disgraceful as this. It's just such a shame, isn't it, really? I think I've actually said on my channel before, guys, that I've been fortunate enough to fly first class a couple of times through my dad's, like, you know, flying points. I would never pay for it, of course. I think it's ridiculously expensive. But, you know, through points, you might as well take up the offer. And it is a great experience, to be fair. You know, you feel amazing. Everyone's looking after you. You can actually relax on a plane rather than being, you know, all squeezed up with other people. It's good fun. How However, if you have someone like this ruining your first ever experience, oh, it just takes away from it all, doesn't it? And what, look, if your parents have spent loads of money on these flights and, you know, it's just all been ruined by this one person, that's all that money down the drain for what would have been and what should have been an amazing experience and now it's just something you really want to forget. Again, OP, I'm so sorry. And now moving on to our second story. Entitled man refuses to move from mobility parking spots. I am a manager at the Way of Subs, and yesterday I had a man park in the mobility parking space. I didn't see him park there at the time and come into our store. We were serving another customer at the time who had just started ordering, and the entitled man interrupted the other customer to ask what the sub of the day was. Already, this got my hackles up because he was so rude about it. I then look up and notice a car parked in said parking space, which is directly in front of our big glass doors. I looked at him and asked if that was his car. He said yes. Now, in New Zealand, people who qualify for mobility parking permits need to get a doctor to fill in the medical part of the form, and the doctor will often send the application form in for you, and you just need to pay for it. I'm not sure how other countries work, but that's us. So, back to the conversation. I say to the man, do you have a mobility parking permit? No, I broke my back and I can't walk that far. Yeah, but you need a permit to be allowed to park there. I'm still waiting for it to come. It's illegal to park in there unless you have a permit. 
You need to move your car. I'll just get my food, then I'll move it. It's only going to take me a couple of minutes. No, you need to move your car now. The entitled man then plants his feet and drops his shoulders, almost like a three-year-old who is not going to do what you asked. It sucks, but we can't actually do much to make people move from those parking spaces other than ask them to move. The tow truck would take too long and they'd already be gone by the time the tow truck gets here. I decided to say the only thing I could in this situation. They either move their car or speed out of there like a scorned lover. And yes, this happens regularly, but most people will just move their car. Now, I did a lot of theater in high school, so I know how to project my voice without yelling. Sir, we will not be serving you unless you move your car. Well, he spun around like only someone who has an intact back could do and stomped out like a big man child. He threw himself into his car and sped off like someone was chasing him. The other customers who were in the store all had something to say. I was about to go and move my own car you were so intimidating. Wow, you're not going to miss the five bucks he was going to spend. Good job. People like that annoy me. My grandpa needs those parking spaces. So thank you for standing up to him. It makes me feel better that everyone else supported me. To be honest with you guys, and let me know if you agree with me down in the comments below, but halfway through that story, I genuinely wasn't sure if OP had gone too far and was just, you know, assuming that this person was lying about their back when really they genuinely could have had a bad back and they genuinely could have applied for their perma that hadn't come yet. As in, do you get what I'm saying? How could OP possibly know? But then as this guy spins around and runs out and gets in his car, it becomes very obvious that no, he doesn't have any back issues at all. He hasn't got a permit. He isn't waiting for a permit to arrive. And he's just trying to, you know, be very lazy, park as close to the shop as possible, and then get his stuff and go just because, you know, it suits him. And he wants to spend as little time walking from his car to the shop as possible. But yeah, I mean, ridiculous thing to do. My granddad has a disabled badge, we call it here in the uh, in the UK, I believe. And um, that entitles him to go into these parking spaces that he needs because it's uncomfortable for people like him to walk a long way. Someone who is well-abled and is fully able to walk a solid distance and, and isn't handicapped should not be parking in those spaces. Imagine they were all full as one of the last people in your store said, and you know, their grandpa needs it just like mine does. Like if they were forced to walk a long way to get into the store they honestly may not be able to do it some people you know in wheelchairs whatever horrible thing to do horrible person well done op for standing up to them and now moving on to our final story of today's episode entitled dad wants my wife and i to get rid of our dog for some background i come from a south asian muslim family in islam dogs are not allowed indoors because they are supposedly dirty and thus invalidate any prayer done in the home. Let's just ignore how dumb that is, considering dogs in the US are probably cleaner than many people back in my home country. Um, OP, that is a crazy statement to start off this story. But anyway, now, I personally am not religious. I know how to pray and will do prayers with relatives if visiting their homes and for certain holidays. But besides that, I'm pretty far from a Muslim in my personal views and I don't regard religion highly in general, not just Islam, but every religion. I am married to a non-Muslim Caucasian woman who had a lovely dog from before we met. I was always okay with dogs, but obviously never had one growing up. I not only fell in love with my wife, but also her dog. I am now a full-fledged dog person. Now, when my parents found out I was dating a non-Muslim and Caucasian woman, it was devastating to them. They always figured I would have an arranged marriage. My mum, to be fair, was quick to get over it once she realized my wife is a great person and was happy to have a daughter-in-law. My dad eventually also seemed to get over it, but he is very religious and was not happy about the dog. He wanted us to get rid of her. We were able to work with a local imam who said it was actually fine for us to have the dog since you can't just throw a living animal away and if we kept a separate room for prayers. My parents and I live in separate homes so us having a dog in no way impacts their home. So now moving on to what's happening currently. After having the imam speak with my dad, I thought that that would be it. My dad uses the yard at my house for gardening and our dog did its business in his garden area. Now, normally she stays away from the garden area, but you know, dogs do dog things. We check two to three times per day in our yard to clear up any potential poop. 
but it just so happened on that one day that we didn't because it was raining in the morning and we'd gone to our friend's place in the afternoon. We just planned on cleaning up the yard once we got home. For some reason, my dad had come over. He got angry. He started yelling at me and asked again when we were going to get rid of our dog. He didn't like that the dog used the yard, that it's against the religion, and apparently he can't bring his friends or my cousins over to our house because of the dog. I told him we were not getting rid of the dog, and I actually pointed out how many non-Muslim things he has done, which probably wasn't the best idea, and that I don't care if he can't randomly bring people over to my house. We would not want him to do that anyway, dog or not. He huffed and puffed and then drove home, where he did some more complaining to my mum and got into an argument about it with my younger brother, who, like me, isn't very religious. Yeah, this is a tough one really, isn't it? And to be honest, I'm not in the best place to even, you know, what, sympathize or give my opinion on this because my parents aren't religious and I'm not religious, to be honest. But I know that it's going to be very difficult and I'm assuming that lots of you watching right now may have very religious parents and you don't particularly follow their religion or, or, you know, you're less involved in the religion than them. And for some parents like these ones here, it can be all well. The mum seems okay. The dad in particular, it can be a struggle, you know, when the religion is such an important part of your life and your kids don't really seem to care but ultimately you have to just let them make their own decisions at some point surely and um yeah in this story look the dad probably doesn't like the fact that you do all these non-muslim things but ultimately you're not a muslim so it's up to you what you do it's a tough one though look comment down below if you have very religious parents and you don't follow their religion to to such an extent that they do or maybe you do let me know how was how was your childhood with very religious parents i want to know because obviously it hasn't happened to me but i can completely understand if it was difficult or maybe it was great who knows comment down below let me know peeping tom entitled mum calls the cops on my autistic brother this happened about three years ago my little brother and i were both in our early 20s at the time both living at home with my mum and dad the way our house is set up is that the second floor has two windows facing the streets the one to the left is my bedroom and to the right is my brother's bedroom Our house is on one long straight street that curves into another and is broken up into other side streets. Our house happens to be at the intersection of the last side street before it starts to curve into the other. At this intersection, there is a bus stop for the local public schools, the very one I took throughout my school career, which was nice since I could just walk out the front door and be at my bus stop in 10 seconds. Although the bus stop is close to my house, you have to turn around and directly be staring at my house to see anything. You might have some luck with our living room windows, but my mum keeps those closed pretty much all the time because of the dogs liking to bark at everything. My bedroom blinds were permanently closed, but my brother likes his open. This was also around the holidays and my parents are decorating nuts. So there was one of those big LED lights in the shape of a bell on his window, obscuring the view even more. So his window is further away and you really have to crane your neck to see it and you're not going to see that much. So then I wake up around 8 a.m. because the dogs are barking after somebody knocks on the door. I peek out my blinds and see a cop car. I think the worst. So I rush downstairs and see my mum out talking to a cop. She comes in livid and then tells me what's happened. Apparently, one of the mums that waits at the bus stop with her kids, elementary school age, saw my brother in his window and thought he was perving on the kids. So she called the cops and said a whole group of parents were concerned. She actually thought it was my dad, according to the police officer, and reported him as being in his underwear. My brother has sensory issues because of his autism and doesn't wear a shirt, but wears pajama pants. This is what he was wearing when the cops were called. And funnily enough, we tested it out from the bus stop view of him and his window. You could only see him from right at the nipple line, for lack of a better term. You'd see worse in the summertime with a guy mowing his lawn or at the pool. And my brother, as his big sister who knows him, was not watching the kids. He was almost certainly pacing around his room and stimming. If he did look, it was a quick glance. He's not a starer. Now, my poor baby brother thought he was going to jail. 
the cop was really trashy too and told my mum to put up curtains because apparently walking around shirtless in your own home is illegal and did i mention it was in the morning and my brother didn't even have lights on in his room this entitled mum must have been really staring at him to figure out that he was apparently and incorrectly wearing underwear but whoever this mum was that called messed with the wrong person my mom can be nuts when one of her kids gets messed with it's great she ended up posting about the situation on a big local news group and people were livid on behalf of my brother some bikers offered to sit on our front porch shirtless with some beers in solidarity my mum actually narrowed it down to two of the mums on that side street as well and found out both of them were in the group and were probably seeing how people were reacting to them calling the cops and getting torn apart. Someone told my mum on the post to talk to the mums the next day at the bus stop, and my mum was going to do it and explain. But the next day, none of the kids showed up at the stop. It pretty much confirmed that the entitled mum had seen the post and was embarrassed as she should have been. And then from that point on, the mums just waited in their cars with the kids until the last possible second, then dropped them off at the bus stop. If the entitled mum had just come to our door, she would have seen the sticker we have, alerting in case of an emergency that someone with autism lives here. She could have put two and two together. She could have looked at my dad's work truck and seen the autism awareness magnets. She could have just kindly asked my mum. She could have just turned and faced the correct direction and stopped straining her neck to stare at my brother in his second floor window behind a Christmas decoration. But no, she immediately decides it's my dad in his underwear because men are only shirtless if they are in underwear. And oh no, shirtless man when my kids are present means pedophile. Call the cops quick. Yeah, as you can tell, I'm still kind of mad. I'm glad she got publicly torn apart, even though no one knew it was her specifically. Okay, quite a lot to unpack in this story, but I want to start with this. First of all, you're allowed to be shirtless in your own home. You're allowed to even be naked in your own home. Obviously, don't go up to your windows and like, you know, just be naked and show it all off unless that's something that you really enjoy doing. But I'm pretty sure legally in your own home, you can wear whatever you want. And if you want to wear nothing, that's cool with me. Second of all, let's talk about this Karen, this entitled mum, because honestly, multiple things she's done here are are just like sickening. Primarily, instantly calling the cops without just knocking on the door, as OP said, and just, you know, asking, being polite, saying there's a naked person or whatever, whatever they thought, please can they just, you know, not be right at the window or just, you know, say your concerns to the person before calling the police. Don't just jump to calling the police. That's pretty much what I mean. That would be one thing. Second of all, blatantly lying and saying that, you know, OP's brother was wearing underwear when how can you possibly know? You physically can't see. And also like, yeah, if they're in a second story, you know, building in their room upstairs, you're not going to be able to even see any of that. You're just guessing. You're just lying for no real reason. I don't really understand why. And then finally, it's so obvious that she knew she was wrong in doing this all in the first place because if she thought she was right she wouldn't then not go to that bus stop with her kid anymore she wouldn't sit in her car cowering not even admitting her mistake would she she just continue on as as she thought was right she knows that she was in the wrong here as shown by the fact that she didn't even want to show her face anymore at that bus stop or at least for as little time as possible so it just proves that she is a horrible horrible person now moving on to our second story entitled mother tries to change my english accent As a little bit of background, I'm from a rural area in Catalonia, Spain. Now, why is that important? Because my native languages are Catalan and Spanish. But until I was like 18 years old, I barely used Spanish outside of school. So my Spanish accent is, let's say, weird. Now, knowing that, imagine my English accent. It's not that I don't want to do better. It's just that I can't. But still, I can talk to people and they will pretty much understand me. Now, I used to work as a waiter in a fancy but pretty much always empty restaurant in my town. We used to have clients from all over and I was the only one who could speak enough English. So I'd be the one taking their orders. I was quite happy to do that because I got to practice and most of the people were great. I had 10 German customers once tip me like five euros each and tell me to keep it for myself. My boss agreed when I told him because they were happy with me. And the best thing, they waited for my shift to end and asked me if I wanted to join them. They were awesome. But 
One day, an entitled mum shows up with her son. I guess he was around 16 or so. She was the stereotypical American black woman. Her way of talking, her gestures, I thought it was hilarious. Since the beginning, when she heard me talk, she put on a weird face. But anyway, I tried my best. Then, after a while of talking, she said to me, Excuse me, could you speak better English? Your English is weirding my son out. Her nice kid said, Mom, please. And then looked at me, I'm sorry you're not. Then looked back at her, let him do his job. I'm sorry, mom, but that is my English. I would need to practice a lot to improve my accent. But you have to be better so you can talk to us. Excuse me? I'm sorry, I don't have a better accent, but I'm trying my best. And the moment everyone was waiting for, let me speak to your manager. So I did, knowing the poor dude wouldn't understand half of what she said. My boss came over. Can I help you? Your employee won't speak better English to us. My boss looked at me confused and I translated for him. What are you doing? What are you telling him? My boss then said, I can't help you. Sorry. He has the best English. I leave you with him. Sorry. Then he told me that if she continued like this to let her write a complaint and let her leave. He just went back to the kitchen. Where is he going? Why is he leaving? What did you tell him? You just needed to speak better English and this wouldn't have happened. Lady, I told you, I can't speak better English. I demand you speak better English. At this point, I'm annoyed. Lady, I told you, I can't speak better English and now I need you to leave. Her nice kid actually laughed a little bit and then the entitled mum grabbed her things and her son and left yelling not very nice things that she wasn't paying that she'd sue us and blah 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 nothing ever happened and that was it my boss never cared about what happened we got to eat what we didn't serve them and we had an anecdote to tell the other waiters Fun fact, something similar happened a couple of days afterwards with a French couple who wanted us to speak French when nobody in the restaurant spoke French and they didn't even know a single word of English. They ended up leaving a bad review on the Spanish page in French. All right, not gonna lie, guys. This story actually really annoyed me. Uh, This woman just gets on my nerves, man. I'll I'll explain why, don't worry. So uh, some of you may know that I studied Spanish for, what, about seven years in my secondary school and then a couple of years at university as well. And I'm still not amazing at speaking it. I'm not completely fluent. My vocabulary is not as good as I'd like it to be. I have a long way to go if I wanted to be, you know, a fluent native speaker. So the fact that OP, the waiter, can even speak a little bit of English, in my opinion, is an amazing thing it's just great that you can even speak a little bit of english in the first place and interact with customers like this woman i mean think about it guys say you watching right now go to i don't know let's say france do you know how to speak fluent french would you know how to speak to a french person in france in french The answer is probably no. Personally, I know that English people are horrible at learning other languages. The vast majority of English people only have one language that they can speak, and that is English. And they don't even know any real conversation from other languages, apart from just maybe a few basic words that you'd use when you go on holiday. So whenever I see someone from another language who can speak perfect English, or whenever I go to another country and, you know, I can't speak that language, but that person in their own country can speak English to me, I'm really impressed. I'm actually, you know, quite embarrassed that they are having to speak English to me in their own country and I know none of their language. It is quite embarrassing. So for this entitled mum to come into this restaurant and say what your English skills are so bad when the person isn't even English and that woman knows no Spanish, by the way, clearly, that is just, it's just so embarrassing and it's so uncalled for. Just, you know, have some common sense. Put yourself in their position. They're speaking their second language to you, doing well, and you're just abusing them for it. I think it's pretty horrible, in my opinion, guys. Guys, if any of you watching right now do speak a second language or even are, you know, multilingual, please do comment down below because I rate you for that. Learning a language is a very tough skill, as I can attest to, and if you've mastered more than one, I'm impressed by you and I want to be your mate, so comment down below. Entitled customer, ignored sauna rules, claims lifeguard assaulted him, called the cops, tried to do a hit piece of journalism, and yelled at me for not handing over personal details of the lifeguard. The title should tell you that this person is a nutter. For some background, I work in a swimming pool part-time on a weekend on top of a full-time job. 
I enjoy the change in work environments and the benefits that come with it. The pool has a sauna, steam room, and spa as well. The sauna is where this all started. This older gentleman, probably late 50s, early 60s, had started to rock up and use the sauna. Typically, there's no problem with this, but he likes to lie down and have a nap in the sauna and then crack it at staff members who check on him to make sure he's okay. He's been told multiple times that he is not to lie down and have a nap or ignore lifeguards when they ask him to give a sign that he's okay. One day, there was a rotation on pool deck no problems. This lifeguard was a bit more diligent in his job and saw that head cap for the sauna hadn't been updated for about 45 minutes. He sticks his head in the sauna and a lady in there tells him that the guy lying down hasn't moved for about 30 minutes since she arrived. The lifeguard immediately asked if he was okay. No response. He asked again, no response. He asked again, but louder, and basically yelling for the person lying down to respond. No response. The lifeguard then started the DRABCs and went for a response that involves tapping the person on the collarbone, yelling, are you okay, after radioing that we have a possible major. Well, this old man was not happy in the slightest that this lifeguard had, one, woken him up from his nap, and two, had viciously assaulted him. He went off his nutter and had a massive argument with the manager about what the lifeguard did and he demanded that the lifeguard be fired for assaulting him in the sauna. The manager told him that it wasn't going to happen and so the old man stormed off to the changing rooms. He came out about 15 minutes later, dressed and told staff not to talk to him. After 20 minutes of waiting in the foyer, the cops show up because they got a report that a person was assaulted in the sauna. But they didn't even get to finish their sentence before he interrupted, yelling that he was the one who was assaulted. That it was that lifeguard out there who did it. And I demand that you arrest them for assault because management here won't do anything about it. One of the officers stayed and spoke to the manager and the man who went from yelling to sobbing about how he was viciously assaulted in the sauna while the other officer went and spoke to the lifeguard who explained what he did. Cops left the facility and told the old man they weren't arresting him or taking details because he was doing his job. The man promptly threw a massive tantrum as the cops left and ended up throwing a bin on the ground before storming out in tears. About four weeks later, a journalist from the local newspaper calls the facility because they have a story about the place and they were wanting to get a comment about it. The journalist said that this older man was assaulted in the sauna by a lifeguard and that the facility had done nothing about it and the man was left bedridden for a week ended up in hospital because he had breathing difficulties and was covered in bruises and that he had a possible hairline fracture on his collarbone from the assault and he's just really upset about it all management told the journalist exactly what happened and we sent her an incident report form about the incidents along with a few others showing that the man has been told before not to sleep in the sauna and not to abuse staff who check on him and if they put out a defamatory story then lawyers would be involved thankfully the story was killed now on to me i was working over the weekend and the same man came in with some papers that he showed me that he got from lawyers he then told me that he was suing the lifeguard who assaulted him in the facility for damages and that i had to hand over to him the full name he only had the first name address phone number and date of birth of the lifeguard. I told him that I was unable to do that and that any legal action undertaken against a member of staff has to go through the council's legal team. This is a rough transcript of what he told me. Are you finished? Yes. Good. Now do your job and give me what I've asked from you. I'm not able to give you that information. If you want to- Are you incapable of doing your job? No, sir, I am not. Then do your job and give me the details of the man who assaulted me. Sir, I'm not allowed to give out any personal details. Or- this is for legal purposes. You are required to hand over the information of that lifeguard to me. Sir, don't yell. And no, I am bound by contract not to give out any personal details of the staff here. 
any legal action goes through the council's legal team. I'm not suing the council. I'm suing that lifeguard who assaulted me. If you do not hand over the information, then I'll have you charged and thrown into prison for obstructing the court of justice. Sir, go through the legal... No, no, no. He was actually stomping at this point. Give me your name right now. No. You are bound, by law I might add, to hand over the details of that man, because it is for legal purposes. Go through the legal t- For the third time, I am not suing the council, I am suing that lifeguard. Now give me his details. By this time, management had heard the yelling and had come down. Amazingly enough, a member of the council's legal team was there, who tried to have a talk with the man. But he refused because I am not suing the council. I'm suing that lifeguard The man left yelling at customers about how the facility is defending a man who assaulted him in the sauna and left him hospitalized As he left he yelled that he'll be going onto social media to have this place shut down And that he had recorded the entire incidents on a hidden camera to date It's been three weeks since this incident and nothing has appeared on social media Uh, Yeah, well then, um, it's pretty clear they don't really come much weirder than this old man. What, first of all, is he doing just going to sleep in the sauna? To be fair, sounds pretty relaxing, but he's been told not to do that for safety reasons. Stop doing it, mate. You can go and sleep in your own bed after you've gone to the sauna. Weird. Second of all, why is he lying about having a secret camera? Like, why would he ever have a secret camera recording in that situation? You're telling me he's gone into the sauna, right? With very few clothes on, because, you know, it's a sauna, with his phone, and he's just recording that is so weird first of all because you're around other like half clothed people that are relaxing in a sauna second of all are you trying to catch out a lifeguard are you trying to like kind of like get some sort of legal questioning going or something like is your main aim to fake being asleep fake being dead get a lifeguard to come and touch you then argue that that was somehow assault and and then you start a legal case What a weird bloke. One of those people that you would just never like to meet and I hope I never come within a mile radius of him because he is messed up in the heads. Now moving on to our second story of today's video. Employee screams at guy who turns out to be the CEO of the company then gets fired. This is actually a story from my mum from a couple of years ago. She works for an energy company in the customer service, taking phone calls, answering questions, and sometimes helping fix simple issues. The company started not that long ago, and she was one of the few first employees. So right from the start, she knew pretty much everyone who worked there, including the CEO, who she describes as a very nice, down-to-earth guy who'd always dress pretty casually so he'd blend in with everyone else pretty easily. After a couple of months, they started hiring more people to work, including this one guy who was apparently very entitled and considered himself better than everyone else. Mum and a few others didn't like him because he was apparently arrogant, always tried to correct others only to be wrong himself, kept making the same mistakes, ignored many rules on the floor, and had a huge temper, and would scream and curse at anyone who said something he didn't like. The screaming would 99.9% of the time be something along the lines of, who the F do you think you are to insert whatever someone did or said. Many complained about him, but the manager at the time was too nice or scared or both to actually do something about him. One day, he was apparently playing games on his phone and at the same time talking to a customer and telling them all kinds of random wrong things when the CEO came to check the floor after a meeting. Seeing this guy, he walked up to him and calmly informed him he wasn't allowed to have his phone out while helping a customer so he could completely focus on the customer for the moment. Cue the guy literally throwing his headset off, jumping to his feet and screaming in the CEO's face And who the F do you think you are to tell me how to do my freaking job? Along with stomping his foot at each syllable. The boss stood there for a moment, obviously in shock. And the guy, thinking he'd won, smirked all smug before the boss pulled a, well, boss move. Well, I just so happen to be the freaking CEO of this freaking company, he screamed back. 
even copying the foot stomping. The dumb guy lost his smirk and according to my mum, went from angry bright red to pure white in half a second. The boss then calmly grabbed the headset, which apparently still had the customer on, who had held everything, and apologized for what she'd heard and just asked her what she needed help with. They finished in a minute before hanging up once again and apologizing and telling her the other guy was fired so it wouldn't happen again. As soon as he hung up, he just said to the guy that he was serious and he'd better gather his stuff. At the end, the annoying employee was gone. The manager got a talk on dealing with bad employees and someone baked the boss a cake. And there we go. A nice little simple one. Again, I've seen this sort of story before, but put yourself in this guy's shoes. How embarrassing must it be to go from thinking you've absolutely like dominated a random person or maybe some other employee you don't know to realizing that that is your ultimate boss and that you've just ruined your entire career in that one moment of stupidity. First of all, like it's pretty stupid to be on your phone whilst talking to a customer. That's embarrassing and that is not doing your job correctly. But then doing that on top of this, crazy. What an idiot. And yeah, fair enough. He didn't deserve to be at the company. The manager should have been a bit harsher because if if you're getting loads of complaints about one employee, they're probably not doing their job very well. And uh, yeah, well done on the boss for blending in and getting rid of that absolute fraud. Entitled mum freaks out because my computer can't play Roblox. First up, some info and backstory. I'm 14 and I've got lots of things I enjoy doing, but most of all is computers, building them, benchmarking, selling, gaming, All of it, I love. Recently though, we kind of lost our foothold in life, which caused us not to have the financial prowess we did before. It was never a lot, but enough. This caused me to sell my computer, and ever since, I've been using a gateway laptop that's very, very old. A Pentium T4200 paired with Vista, so it doesn't run many games. A list of games it can run are as follows. Counter-Strike Source, Counter-Strike Condition Zero, and Half-Life all at an average of 25 to 49 FPS. So then, on to the story. My aunt comes over with her daughter and her daughter's entitled friend. Now, he's the only one who's really important to this story. Let's call him Nate. Nate comes knocking on my door and then opens it. I'm playing CSS with a few friends who have the game. Nate says, I was told I could play Minecraft on your computer. Uh, sure, in like 10 minutes, I reply. To the kid's credit, he's very patient and usually quite nice. He came from an unstable home, so I don't entirely blame him. 10 minutes pass and I can see he's a bit impatient. I had some schoolwork I could do on my phone, so I set him up on Minecraft. The only problem is my computer is way, way, way too low spec to run Minecraft. The only Minecraft I can get to run at a playable frame rate, 40 FPS, was beta 1.7 at tiny render distance. So I got him on the game and then I left thinking nothing of it. Less than 15 minutes later, I heard a loud banging noise. The kid had changed the version to pre-release 1.17 and blue screen the whole machine. The banging was him lifting the computer and bashing it on the desk. I go into my room to see the issue and I saw the blue screen. At the time, I thought the banging may have been from outside. The rest of the kids were in our above ground pool and this conversation ensued. I tried to update Minecraft and your computer kicked me out, said Nate. Yeah, you're not supposed to do that. I explained to you, my computer is very old and we don't have much money for a new one. This kid always had the best of the best, so he had a nice gaming rig. Well, I'm bored. Anyway, I'm going outside. All right. I restart my computer and go back to playing CSS with my friends for around an hour before my little cousin, curse her, comes into my room. Let's call her entitled cousin as she now becomes important. Hey, OP. Can I play Roblox on your computer? She actually asked nicely for once. Oh, hey, sorry, but my computer can't really run Roblox. Now, this is half true. It can run very basic games, such as Natural Disaster Survival, but it can't run games that are more advanced. Arsenal, Royal High, Adopt Me. If you try to run games that are more advanced, you'll hit two gigabytes of RAM usage and that blue screens the computer. She only plays Adopt Me and Royal High. You're lying. I've seen you play Roblox on it before. Now, I wasn't playing Roblox at the time. I was playing Doom. No, I've never played Roblox on this. I'm telling mum. She starts to storm off and I quickly realize I'm in deep trouble. I tell my friends what's happening before chaos strikes. 
the entitled mum walks into my room and says why can't she play roblox my computer physically cannot run roblox do you not know about computers uh i do know about computers also, can't she just play Roblox on your iPhone? My aunt has an iPhone X, which is more than capable. Uh, my phone cannot run Roblox. Your computer obviously can. Look at it. It's a hundred times the size, she says, putting her phone next to the laptop, mocking me like a child. At this point, I know she can't be reasoned with, and I just cave and get her on her Roblox account and lay in my bed. At first, my cousin is happily playing Roblox obby games before she joins royal high now this whole time i'm on my phone next to her oblivious i was actually surprised that it was playing at above 15 fps when i looked at what she was doing i eventually left my room after 30 minutes because i needed to do the dishes apparently nate had been inside and was in the bathroom when i walked by slipping into my room when i left now i'm unaware exactly how long he was in there but maybe 20 minutes later i hear another crash i go into the room and find that they had thrown the laptop onto the floor i lose my temper and say to get the freak out i look at my laptop now on the floor and see that the display still works but to my horror my entitled cousin had opened up 23 chrome tabs had royal high still running and like 12 youtube videos all at 720p taking up well over two gigabytes of ram i don't know how it hadn't blue screened but it obviously wasn't working because you couldn't click anything the laptop is junk yes but I paid $30 for it, and I scrounged for that money. And to watch them violate my things like this made me upset. I couldn't even turn it off, it was running so slow. It had to have taken three gigabytes at least for its slowness, and then my entitled aunt walked into the room and started to get mad at me to compound matters. Why did you kick them off the computer? She says, taking my laptop in her arms, trying to click stuff, but it's not working. Why isn't the computer working? Because your daughter and her friend broke it off. They wouldn't do such a thing. They said you threw it to the ground because you wanted to play on it. I believe them. I wouldn't count on what a spaz says. Now that spastic comment actually hurts. I have a low IQ of 67 and autism. And at this point, I really just cried in response. Learn some freaking manners. We are guests, you insert slur for Italians. We are priority. She throws my laptop onto the floor with force before walking out. My mum heard this. She's barred them from our house now. The laptop still works, but my aunt threw it so hard, it broke the battery and only works plugged into a wall. It runs at like a third of the speed it used to and now only plays CSS at 15 FPS instead of the 30 to 45. The fans no longer work and it blue screens every few hours, but I'm hoping to save for a new PC very soon, but it's looking unlikely. Oh man, I'm so sorry to hear that happen to you. Honestly, I know that having like an old rundown PC is one of the worst things you can possibly have. And then to have someone just ruin it on top of the fact that it's already, you know, blue screening, already running on fumes. Why? Come on, that is just so horrible. I know a lot of you guys watching right now probably have PCs of your own. And you know that blue screening and having an old PC is like one of the worst things you can do. But you know, to upgrade a PC, it's a lot of money. I'm fortunate enough that I reinvested some of the money that I made from this youtube channel back into a nice pc but for you know two years of running this channel almost i had like the oldest pc possible when i tried to edit it would just break down blue screen i'd have to restart i'd lose all the all the video footage and all the files it was horrible so op i know it feels and i'm so so sorry that you know someone has gone above and beyond that and made it even worse why i just hope that you can get a new pc pretty soon doesn't have to be amazing but better than one that blue screens every time you try and play a game at you know 60 fps please i hope you can get one of them so then, moving on to our second story of today's episode, Entitled Mum Tries to Change the Date of a Performance. So, I, a 19-year-old female, have been helping as a student teacher at my dance studio for a few years now, and I've met a few entitled people here and there, but this one really takes the cake. Just a note that this happened a few years ago when I was around 16 or 17 and COVID wasn't around. I have a student, maybe around eight years old, in a junior ballet class. I will call her nice kid since she's actually really sweet 
Her mum, the entitled mum of this story, is not. I could probably write a few more stories on what her mum has done, but I'll stick to just this one for now. Anyways, it's around performance season, and my studio has just confirmed the performance date for the performance. In my dance studio, there are windows outside of the studios so that parents can watch their kids from the lobby. I see the entitled mum waiting outside, and I was a bit shocked since she was often five to ten minutes late to pick up her kid. I guess that she just wanted to buy some tickets for the show, so I smiled at her and continued teaching my class. When class ended, I saw her talking to some other parents before spotting me and walking over to me. The conversation that happens goes as follows. Hello, can I chat with you about the performance for a bit? Said the entitled mum. Of course. Are you buying tickets or do you just have questions about how things will work? No, I, I wanted to talk about the date of the performance. Um, I can't make it. Oh no, that sucks. Well, if you want, we offer digital copies for parents who can't make it. It costs a little less than the tickets, too. No, see, I want to be able to see my kid perform on a stage. Yeah, but unfortunately, I can't really do anything about that. The only options we have are either to purchase tickets or a DVD copy. Well, can't you change the date? See, I really want to watch my kid. It's not that hard. Um, no, because the stage has already been paid for and booked. And many parents have already bought tickets. Well, what would you know about this? You're just a teenager. Let me speak to the owner. I sigh and call my boss. I'll call him Ben. I already know that the entitled mum will lose because Ben is scary when he wants to be. I quickly tell him what happened and he took her to an empty studio to argue, well, chat with her. I don't know what he said, but it ended with her angrily fuming and dragging her kid out of the building. The week after, she actually bought a ticket for the performance. I asked her why she couldn't originally, and you guys want to know why she couldn't attend the performance? She had a hair appointment. I was a little shocked that she had made Ben argue with her over a hair appointment, but I didn't say anything. I don't really know if this counts as being entitled, but I think it does. Sorry, OP, you're not sure if someone requesting to change the date of an entire performance with loads of kids, loads of parents, obviously, you know, going on that date because they have a hair appointment of their own is entitled? Well, let me tell you, it's pretty entitled. I mean, seriously, guys, that has got to be up there. Um, Changing or wanting to change an entire dance performance with loads of kids, loads of parents because you want to have a hair appointment on that certain day. That is Matt, I sorry. Just rearrange your hair appointment. Who cares? Your hair's probably trash anyway. Crazy. Entitled aunt tries to grab me, so I push her into the pool. A quick bit of background. I am a 17-year-old trans male, and I live in a rural part of Quebec with my mothers and sisters. So, this happened last week, and I wanted to post it here. i have gotten my COVID vaccine yesterday, and my arm was very sore from it, and it hurt when someone touched it. Saturday was my cousin's birthday. Keep in mind that he's 10. My aunt, our entitled parent of this story, wanted everything to be perfect for her son. My mother and I were invited and had no choice but to follow. Now, something you should know is that my aunt is homophobic, transphobic, religious, and an overall nasty woman. Okay, so we arrived at the party. It was a hot summer's day, so it was a pool party. The party was gorgeous. Beautiful decorations, cake, and snacks. When my aunt notices us and comes to see my mother and I, it was clear she didn't recognize me at first. Oh, who's this? My mum said, this is OP, but we call him by his new name now. My entitled aunt looked disgusted at the fact that I was no longer a girl. She made a nasty remark about my clothes and hair. I was polite and said I was glad to see her, which I wasn't, and went to see my other cousin. We'll call him Ginger who's the same age as me and not at all like his mother. Later, at around three o'clock, the party's going fine and everything is okay. I can tell my aunt has been staring at me in disgust, but I just brush it off. I was sitting by the pool watching the kids play when I heard that dreaded, excuse me, OP. I look behind me and see my aunt standing over me. Hey, aunt, do you need anything? Yes, I want you to put this dress on and stop distracting the kids, she said. 
as she handed me a tacky pink dress. Uh, sorry, aunt, but I'm not gonna do that, I replied, as I put the dress on the nearby chairs. But OP, you really shouldn't be out dressed like that in front of the children. Keep in mind, I was wearing shorts that stopped at my knees and a t-shirt. No, aunt, I don't have to listen to you, I said, trying to go find my mum. Remember when I said my arm hurt a lot because of my vaccine? Well, my aunt grabs right where I was vaccinated and squeezes. I yelp in pain, screaming for her to let go. She doesn't and keeps yelling how I'm a sin and that I'm going to hell for this. I eventually free my arm and push out of reflex. She stumbles back into the pool and falls in, dressed and makeup on. She comes up and yells at me that I'm a monster and that I am damned for hell. My mum comes over having seen the whole thing and tells my aunt that we're leaving. According to Ginger, after we left, my aunt sulked the whole party and said I ruined her day. Keep in mind, it was her child's birthday party and not hers. So just to make this clear, OP, you're telling me you pushed your transphobic and homophobic aunt into a pool. Sorry, what a legend, by the way. Well done, this guy. Doing the right thing, doing something that I can only dream of doing, which is, um, you know, giving someone a little bit of karma that deserves it. Well done. So then, moving on to the second story of today's episode, Karen cancels order because she didn't believe shrimp was a meat. This is from when I worked at a tiny pickup delivery restaurant in an affluent area by a major university and hospital. Most customers were from surrounding neighborhoods or drunk high uni students and stressed out nurses. This was my second job, but the first one where I had to deal with customers face to face. I was given no training, so it was a bit of a learning curve. Enter Boomer Karen, who looked like she was born with not just a chip, but a whole block on both shoulders. She waddled in on a fine afternoon and ordered one of our more popular items, fried rice. Our fried rice had the option to add a meat for $1 more. Karen specifically wanted shrimp fried rice. All right, madam, that'll be $6.66. I don't actually remember the price. The Karen was aghast. What? Uh, But the menu says $5.66. Yes, madam, but meat costs $1 extra. Her face then filled with pure disbelief and contempt, lip curling up in growing outrage. Then she ground out in a near hiss, shrimp is a meat? I was shocked at the ridiculous question, also thinking that it's clearly listed under meats on the menu, and oh my Garados, what do I do? Me.exe has stopped functioning. Um, yes, madam, meat is when you partake of a living creature's flesh, and it used to be a little animal swimming around in the ocean. I wiggled my hand then to emphasize without thinking, because now my brain is broken. What the what just happened to you, OP? What the heck? <laughs> Karen's eyes now grew big with indignation. I brace for yelling. I have enough entitled relatives to recognize the signs. Why am I here alone? This sucks. Karen then snorted like an angry bull. I'm surprised she didn't slam a fist on the counter. It looked like she wanted to, but she was holding a clutch purse. How dare you? This is a scam. Shrimp isn't a meat. This is a ripoff. She then ranted for a bit more. I started chewing her out at this point since she wasn't anything close to as scary as my mum when she gets angry. I then see her take a breath and get a word in. Do you want to order the shrimp fried rice, madam, or perhaps a regular one? Oh, cancel it. She then stormed out through the thankfully propped open door. It was a glass door and would have broken from a good slam. Uh, okay then, I just said to myself. Fortunately, she never returned, and the shift manager, when he returned from a delivery, thought it was hilarious. Uh, yes, Karen, I can confirm, shrimp is a meat. I I thought that was pretty obvious, you know, fish is meat, crab is meat, shrimp's meat, um, anything that tastes kind of meaty is normally a meat. It's crazy, but, um, yeah, that's just how the world works. I I didn't know people didn't realize that that shrimp was a meat, uh, and even so, why are you complaining so much and getting into such a fit about a $1 extra payment? Hey, $6 or whatever the price was, seems pretty reasonable for shrimp fried rice. I'd pay for that right now, and by the way, I'm actually quite hungry. And um, the more I think about shrimp fried rice, the more I think 
I kind of want to go and get some food. But hey, $6 for that, pretty great price. I don't know why Karen was, you know, getting so mad. It's just a little bit of money for some food. And now moving on to our final story of today's episode. Entitled professor yells at me when I won't let her students into my bar without ID. I am a 21 year old female and I work at an upscale restaurant bar as an events social media coordinator and occasional host. I truly love my job and my managers and everything. My restaurant is in a large college town where I also attend. And so we have a large demographic of people coming in. This happened a few weeks ago while I was working as a host that night. And as we are a bar as well, I check IDs and I'm technically considered a bouncer, which is funny because I'm literally 125 pounds. I also usually have an actual big bouncer with me who comes up from one of our sister bars to help me out with IDs and stuff. But today I didn't. So an entitled parent comes in. Now she looks to be in her 60s with her students who looks to be in her early 20s. So I definitely was going to have to card her. Also under my state's laws, I can only accept the following forms of ID, either US state ID or license, US military ID or passports of any country. Now this does not include foreign IDs or licenses. It must be a passport. So here is how the conversation goes. Hi, welcome to the restaurant. How are you doing today? Hi, said the entitled parents. This is my PhD students from such and such country and we just wanted to get a drink. Now, a little note, I didn't ask for this info. She literally just told me right off the bat. This is the only reason why I'm mentioning it. Okay, great. Can I see your ID, I say, looking at the students? She looks a little concerned and goes, I didn't bring an ID. Oh, I'm sorry, but the only way I can allow you to drink is for you to present a valid ID. The entitled professor immediately gets defensive and loud and goes, I've known this girl for four years and she is over 21. Again, I'm sorry, but I do need a valid form of ID. I list all of our valid forms then, which is also posted on a sign near the entrance of the restaurants. She is of age and I know it. I can vouch for her. I do have my undergrad graduate student ID with me? She begins to take out her undergrad student ID. Now, she's not from my school, but that doesn't matter at all. And I again tell them that I need a valid form of ID. She then tries to hand me the school ID that has her birthday in the bottom corner, which does say that she is over 21. But again, I cannot accept this. See, her ID shows that she's over 21. I start going on my spiel again, but this woman is not having it. Apparently, a school ID is just as legit as a government-issued document to her. But whatever, what do I know? It's not like I check IDs for seven hours of my shift or anything. The entitled professor is pretty much yelling at me and causing a whole scene in the entrance area at this point. This is ridiculous. She has shown more than enough to gain entry. I know her very well and I know she's of age. She's a PhD student here and we deserve to be served. Mom, I'm sorry about that, but this is the law. I could get into serious trouble, not just with my boss, but with the authorities by allowing someone to be served without a valid ID. I cannot believe this. We're leaving. She turns to leave. And as she's exiting, she turns back to me and says the most bizarre thing. Oh, and by the way, that is an accredited university. She's referring to the student ID. I was honestly just like so confused by the whole situation that I don't even say anything back. Again, I would like to reiterate that from the beginning, this woman was hostile and extremely rude. She continuously raised her voice throughout the interaction while I stayed extremely calm and was as professional as I could be. And just to let you guys know how hostile she was, there was a group of three that entered right behind her, waiting to get ID'd and seated, and they'd listened to the whole interaction. Now, as soon as the woman left, they asked me, are you okay? That lady was so awful. So yeah, I told my boss who also owns the place and he was very proud of me for standing my ground. 
I love you, King Julian. Well then, not entirely sure if OP's boss is called Julian or she's just a massive Madagascar fan. But either way, King Julian, you are the GOAT. Now, as for the story, I can actually kind of relate to the student. I was a student for a long time and it would be very annoying when, you know, you'd forget your ID on a night out, but you'd have your student card with you, which said your date of birth and therefore your age. And, you know, said you were over 21 or over 18 in the, in the UK. But still, like, as soon as you learn that it's not a valid form of ID, which everyone one does you know it's just like yeah you're not going to get into places if they're asking for ids and you just have your student id it's not valid sorry it's not a legally binding document that the government has said yes that is a good form of id to let you into places and you have to you have to you know think about the bar's perspective if they do let you in without id and then later you know it gets found out that you are under 18 or under 21 in america in this story they can be liable for massive you know lawsuits damages police stuff they don't want to be risking that that is for sure and yeah a student id is not a valid form of id so there you go stop complaining go home get your id and come back well uh, that's what i used to do when i forgot my id at uni anyway um but that is probably what this person should have done he can't play guitar he's faking it I've been browsing this subreddit for a few days now and decided I get my fair share of entitlements. I'm 14 years old and live in the Netherlands. My father is Dutch and my mum is Vietnamese. I've been playing guitar for over five years and I really enjoy doing it. My dad listened to a lot of dream theater and I grew up with that. I play a lot of progressive metal. This happened last year before COVID came. I was almost 14. We had this talent show in the second grade of middle school and I decided to join. I played The Endless Knot by Haken, a great song, with a little improvised solo in the silent piano part near the end. There were no real awards, but it was mostly for enjoyment. There were like 10 other participants. Six of them were girls that sung, one group that danced, two comedians and one other guitarist. And I won. I was really happy and the other participants were really nice. I personally found one comedian hilarious. He had some good jokes. A lot of parents actually gave me a standing ovation and it was one of the best moments of my life. Unfortunately, my parents weren't there because of work. One of the girls that sung was crying that she didn't win and her mum, the entitled mum of this story, came to comfort her. I didn't get a reward and the talent show was just for entertainment and fun. But this entitled mum was so mad that her daughter didn't win. She went to the jury and said that I'd faked my guitar playing, although I practiced a lot for it. I got on the stage and she followed me. She started accusing me of faking it in front of everyone. At first, I thought she knew the song and that it's being played on a seven string guitar. I use an Epiphany Les Paul with single coils and six strings. I played the lower parts just one octave higher and it sounded fine, but she never said anything about that. She also said that a guitar could never make such sounds and I explained that it was plugged into an amplifier with my self-made pedal board. After that came this ridiculous conversation. How dare you make my daughter cry with that faking of yours? The entire mum said. Mom, I didn't fake my playing. But a kid like you could never play something like that. There's no explanation. You're faking. Obviously, she didn't have any real arguments. Why would I participate in a talent show without an award and fake something? After that, she went a little quiet. Then she said, then prove that you're not faking it. So I played a few ladders at high speed and the solo of the song without the backing track. At this point, the audience was agreeing with me and they told the woman to please leave the stage. After that, she got onto the whole Satanism thing. Now I was wearing a tool shirt with a kind of graphic back and here is a picture of it. Okay, so as you can see, um, I mean, they're not that, are they, are they satanic? I wouldn't know they were. Yeah, the design on the back is a little weird, I guess, but I wouldn't say it's satanic. And even if it is, who cares? Well, apparently this entitled mum, who said, because you're a Satanist. Uh, what? I don't understand how this is relevant in any way, by the way, guys. Yeah, I see that shirt. It's pure blasphemy. It's a banned shirt. They aren't even satanic. I don't believe it. You're going to manipulate us all with that devilish music of yours. I'm not manipulating anyone. I'm just doing this for fun. F off you, insert racist Asian slur that I don't want to translate. Go back to your devilish worships. Now I'm getting really annoyed at this point. I'm not a Satanist and also don't call me that. But the entitled mum just says the same racist Asian slur again to me. 
The judges then asked her to please leave the stage. The daughter tried to stop her mother, but the entitled mum kept going. The daughter got really embarrassed and ran away. The entitled mum looked at me and said, look what you've done. She then approached me and tried to punch me, but I just pushed her away and people began to actually drag her away from me. While she was dragged, she was screaming even more racist Asian slurs. She was ultimately banned from the school and I never heard of her again. The daughter eventually confronted me at school and apologized. I accepted the apology and we became friends. I went to her house a few times actually, but I never saw her mum. I never actually asked what happened because I didn't even want to think about her anymore. And that was my story of an entitled parent. Thanks for listening. Well, uh, yeah, a uh, classic case here of a parent getting jealous because someone else's kid is more talented than theirs. Seen it all before, pretty standard stuff, but um, yeah, I, I guess it does happen a lot, that's for sure. To be fair, this parent might actually genuinely be a little bit embarrassed and jealous of this kid because they're young, right? 14 is not old and to be that talented at that age is very impressive. Honestly, I reckon the parent is looking at the kid going, I have never been that talented at any musical instruments in, in my entire life, yet this guy is 14 and is just absolutely dominating and has won the talent show for, for being incredible. I'm going to make them feel bad about themselves because that is what I want to do. Strange. And now moving on to our next story. You can't fire me. I have kids. This was many years ago when I was the shop steward for a union. This means I was the one who had to mediate grievances between employees and management. So, the manager calls me to discuss an issue with an employee he wanted to fire. He had done progressive discipline, had given her many chances, and now was just done. The issue was, the woman just didn't want to show up for work. He told me how many chances he had given her, and he wanted me present for her termination notice. That termination notice went like this. The manager said, Entitled worker, do you know why I asked for this meeting and why I asked the shop steward to be present, OP? No, I have no idea. Well, you were supposed to work yesterday from 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. And that was written on the schedule, correct? Yes, but I overslept. Yes, and when you didn't show up for work, I called you several times and you didn't answer. Well, I couldn't hear my phone. I overslept, but when I woke up, I called you. That's true. You called me at 10.45, almost three hours after you were supposed to be at work. Yeah, but I called you as soon as I woke up. Yes, and you told me that you would be in to finish your shifts. I did. I came into work as soon as I could. You showed up at 2.30. That's over three hours after you told me you were on your way in. Oh, but I couldn't find daycare for my kids. Didn't you already arrange for daycare because you knew you were on the schedule for 8 a.m.? Well, my daycare won't let me bring the kids in late. Look, we've had this talk before and I've given you several warnings that if you can't show up for work when you were scheduled, I'm going to have to let you go. That's not fair. It's not my fault I couldn't find daycare. No, no, what's not fair is having your co-workers forced to work double shifts because you don't show up to relieve them. Finding daycare for your kids is your responsibility. If you want to work here, you have to be able to show up and work. You can't fire me. It's FMLA, which is Family Medical Leave Act, that states you can't be fired or docked pay if you're staying home to care for a sick family member. Well, were your kids sick? I thought you said you overslept. No, I overslept, uh, but I can't leave my kids without daycare, so it's FMLA. At this point, I step in. Excuse me, I would like to help you here, but if you just don't show up for work, there's no way I can save your job. You've been given more warnings, reprimands, and extra chances than our contract requires, and I don't have any grounds to grieve this termination. It's FMLA! I had to stay with my kids! You can grieve this under FMLA! FMLA only applies if your kids are sick. You just overslept. FMLA! It's because of my kids. I can't leave my kids. FMLA, you can't fire me, she went on and on. Okay, I think we're done here. Here is your termination notice. We're going to ask you to leave the building now. Security will escort you to your locker to clear out your stuff. FMLA, I have kids. You can't fire me if I have kids. Security then shows up and she is escorted to her locker and out of the building. 
all the while screaming at the top of her lungs, they fired me because I have kids. I'm going to sue all of you. I'm going to own this business. You're all going to be fired. I have kids. You can't fire me because I have kids. I can't believe what I'm reading. That is the main thing about this. What is she even saying? Unfortunately, no one explained to her that having a job wasn't all about us agreeing to give you a paycheck. You actually have to show up for the job and do the work. She tried to protest her firing, was denied unemployment, tried to register a complaint against me with the union for failure to represent, the manager for sexual discrimination, and the business for failure to uphold FMLA. Ah, you just can't fix bulletproof stupid. For clarification, she had done this same stunt without the FMLA component five different times before this. Just what? Show up for work? five times and she still had her job i think she still believes she was screwed over on that fmla thing was this woman's argument genuinely i have kids you can't fire me i I don't know why i'm asking you lot that It, it was i read it out multiple times she kept saying it for some reason imagine if that was actually like a legal thing you have kids so you can never ever be fired i'd have five kids right now working five different jobs and i would never go to work guys i'd just you know just be chilling earning the money um for doing no work that's for sure and be saying you know what are you gonna do man boss man that's that's paying me fire me i have kids man you can't do that do you not know the law weird imagine if that is how the world worked it'd be um pretty backwards but (laughs) at least this woman would be right i mean seriously i've never seen something as stupid as i've got kids so you can't fire me What? How brain dead can one individual person be? That's got to be up there for me. Like, what the actual heck is that? You're too young to play tennis. I, a 12-year-old male, and my family go to a tennis court near us a lot. There's three courts with a one-hour limit if someone is waiting. So we go and play. Now, I'm not exactly a feather. I'm pretty thick. I do feel self-conscious when playing, so there's that. Also, my sister is an ace when it comes to tennis. Now, this is relevant for later in the story. So we're playing and this entitled parent comes over with her two kids around maybe 17 to 19 years old. I sense danger and she immediately tells us to get off the courts. Please get off the courts. We want to play. My mum said, sorry, we got here 10 minutes ago. You'll have to wait a bit. But my kids deserve it more. Now my mum gets a little angry, but still tries to ask her to leave. Then the entitled parent drops the bomb. Besides, my kid is better than your fat, insert Asian slur, over there. And my mum just freaking loses it. See, a Karen is scary, but they have no power when compared to an Asian Karen. And they begin arguing while me and my sister are quietly hitting shots to each other. The two Karens are still at it though, with the entitled parent telling my mum, my daughter is better than yours. To which my mum replies, is she on varsity tennis? And the entitled parent pales. At that exact moment, my sister hits a fat serve and lands it perfectly, making the Karen grab her kids and leave. We laugh and finish our session. And there we go. What a story to start off today's episode. Let me just make this clear, right? Was was OP calling their own mother an Asian Karen? That was, they, they did say that, right? I'm not, you've called your own mother a Karen there. I think she didn't act like one at all. She seemed fine. She was defending her court and her kids. It seemed okay, but hey, you're going to know better than me. Maybe she is a Karen. A Karen v Karen battle to start off this episode. Incredible scenes. I got to see a follow up though. I mean, I've got to see at least a doubles match between the kids or maybe a 1v1 between you and the Karen or a 1v1 between both Karens on the tennis court let it go down whoever wins gets to stay sounds like your sister is very very good she's a varsity tennis player so maybe let her take one of them on and and I just want to see what happens I mean honestly there are loads of events going on right now you know YouTube v TikTok boxing we had um Floyd Mayweather v Logan Paul how about a a Karen v Karen battle I'd pay for that now moving on to our next story entitled parent complains because his kid can't get the summer program he wants a little backstory i started fostering this little girl late last year she is 13 years old and i'm in the process of adopting the girl through lots of trials and tribulations it looks like it's going to happen the kid will call her cat to keep things simple now she is smart truthfully so so much smarter than she believes she doesn't actually have much confidence in herself and i have her seeing a therapist I guess years and years in the CAS system will do that to you. I managed to get her into a summer program for kids interested in all things related to STEM, 
We've been working on little projects at home, mostly to get her ahead in her school, like making floating concrete fireworks, etc. I took her to an information session yesterday for the program, so she can select what she's going to do in the program. Her session is the first two weeks of August. So yeah, we're there and going through everything. And luckily, she was able to register for the last open spot in a robotics course. And what would you know, a dad and his little idiots are behind us. Well, he gets up to the table and is all annoyed that there's no more room in the class. And right away, he turns to us to say we should give up the spot for his son. Blah, blah, blah. That his kid wanted to do the class but I politely declined. I've never understood why a simple no sets these people off. But yeah, we are met with, wouldn't the girl prefer to be in a cooking or housekeeping class that she's a girl and girls don't do well in technical fields? I don't lose my cool exactly. I just make the jerk off motion in the air and say snooze you lose and walk away. The guy just continued going off that he's got a man's job. He's a machine operator. His kid is a man that me or my kid wouldn't understand anything. More blah blah BS. More sexism, really. The thing about the summer programs is that they are run by people working in the fields who are using their break to do the classes. And current university students and the man working at the desk interned at the company I worked for last November, right before I left the company. So I knew him. We are friends. He's the reason I found out about the program. He told the guy then, yeah, you know, I interned for her, right? Like she was running the entire department at the company. She's an engineer. I was already walking away at this point and I wish I had a clever line to give him and do the mic drop, but I didn't. It never ceases to amaze me how pig headed people can be. Oh, come on, man. It's 2021. There's no need to bring sexism into the equation just because you're butthurt that you can't get your kid onto a robotics course. Why can a girl not go on, but your your manly family deserves the son to go on? Like, come on, man. We're not living in the, the, you know, dark age anymore. Get your head out the sand. Are you an ostrich? That is my question. Can I say, actually, if any of you get that reference, then you have surprised me. If you get the reference, comment down below and I'll send you a gift card. I'm not even joking. That is how niche that reference is to probably the majority of you. Comment down below and I'll send you a gift card. I'm genuinely serious. I mean, I'm just reading back again. When the guy said, wouldn't the girl prefer to be in a cooking or housekeeping class? No, she can be in any class she wants. And let's be realistic. She's probably way better than your son at robotics. (laughs) So, so sexist. And now moving on to our final story of today's episode, front seats. My wife and I live 15 hours away from my family. This is so that she can be close to her family and so that I don't have to deal with mine on a daily basis. The other day, about a week or two ago, we decided to visit my family. When we got there, everything was going great. We were all getting along and happy to see each other. About three hours into our visit, I decided to show my wife around my hometown. She'd never visited before and had only met my folks once at our wedding. Both of my parents volunteer to tag along just in case I get lost. I hadn't been back home in years and some of the roads had changed. We agreed that it was a good idea and started to load up into my car. As I started to buckle up, I noticed my mother is getting into the front passenger seats. I stop and look to my wife, who is staring at my mother with a confused expression. Um, mum, I said, trying to sound polite because I know the slightest thing can set her off. Can you hop in the back seat? That's my wife's seat and she gets car sickness if she's in the back seats. My mother scoffs and rolls her eyes at me. She can just sit in the back seat, she said, exasperated, as if she'd explained this thousands of times to me. We won't be gone long, so she won't get car sick. Now, my wife can get car sick from a three minute drive if she is in the back seat, especially when she is around strangers. And yes, my folks are strangers to her. Taking all of this into consideration, I quickly pipe up and say, so can you. I'm not arguing about this with you, mum. This is my car and I want my wife to enjoy being able to look around where I grew up. She scoffs again and turns to my wife and says with the most condescending tone I've ever heard, you won't mind if I take this seat, will you? He's my baby boy and I haven't been able to see him since you heartlessly took him away from me. Luckily, my wife and I didn't have to do anything because my hero of a father jumped in and told my mother to get out of the car. Now he isn't the type to deal with BS and my mother knows this. She quickly hopped out and turned to get into the back seat. 
I sighed in relief for a moment until my father stopped her. We are not going with them, he said, anger very evident on his face as he stepped in front of my mother. We need to talk about how you treat our daughter-in-law. You see, my mother has always hated my wife, whereas my father treats her no different from any of my siblings and I. Needless to say, an argument broke out and my wife and I left without seeing the town. Really, guys, all of that just because you wanted to sit next to your son in the front seat of a car for what, a few minute drive? Just go and sit in the back like any normal person with your own husband. It's it's actually so, like, I don't, I don't think anyone would ever do that. Like, say, you know what? Sorry, wife, but I'm sitting in the front. So you're, you're then forcing the wife, like, don't even, it doesn't even matter about the car sickness, I don't think, because it's just weird anyway. You would force your son's wife to sit in the back with her father-in-law whilst you sit in the front with your son. It's very strange. Like, usually the couples would tend to stay together, right? Unless you'd all agreed on it, then it's completely fine. But it's just a bit weird in principle to even suggest that, let alone go through with it after you know that she has car sickness troubles and is probably not going to feel very well if she is forced to sit in the back. It's a very strange one. All of that could have been so easily avoided had she just sat in the back, the, the mum, I mean, of course, and then they could have had a nice day. But no, she ruined it. And it's probably a good thing she did, to be honest, because it doesn't sound like you want to be spending too much time with somebody like that. Entitled airline passenger takes a ride on the luggage carousel. I used to fly for work a lot. I have so many entitled people stories, it stops surprising me to run into this behavior. This is one such story. Every single person that has flown also knows about the ridiculousness that happens while trying to pick up their checked luggage at the baggage claim. Why people can't just stand back a few feet and then walk up and get their luggage when they see it so everyone can easily get their luggage, I have no idea, but I digress. While waiting in the baggage claim area, there was suddenly a mad rush of people crowding up to the carousel. Now, I'm not sure if the airport decided to dump 14 or 15 different flights of luggage at the same baggage claim, but there were way more people crowding around the carousel than there should have been. To not get edged out, I walked up to the edge and waited for my luggage. As more and more people piled up around the claim, it was six or seven people deep all the way around the rather large carousel. The belt finally starts moving and I instantly hear a commotion behind me, but I just ignore it at first. After all, we're all doing that same song and dance. Is that my bag? No. Wait, is that my bag? No. Oh, that one? No. Behind me, I hear a random assortment of phrases from the crowd. The likes of, hey, ouch, what are you doing? Cuss words, quit it, you get the point. Apparently, some guy thought he was entitled to forcefully push his way through the crowd to get up to the belt. This individual literally knocks me over into the people beside me pushes me backwards and stands in the six inches of space he makes in front of me. I thought he must see his bag or something. Nope, he just wanted to be up front. Excuse me, I say. He doesn't reply. I lightly push him in the back, for he is an inch in front of my nose, and I say, hey, what do you think you're doing? He doesn't reply again. His mistake was not even acknowledging me and pushing me back again with his butt. Where the heck could I possibly go? Now, I'd like to say I was having a pleasant trip and it didn't set me off, but I would be lying. I'm not exactly the smallest guy. I pushed him with both hands square in his back and sent him onto the luggage belt. He spun onto his back, landed on a bunch of luggage and off he went down the belt. The look on his entitled and rude face was priceless. I didn't know someone's eyes could get that wide. Now, could I have handled it better? Yes. Would it have been more satisfying though? Absolutely not. Even better, remember me saying that the entire carousel was packed all the way around six or seven people deep? Well, he couldn't get off the carousel for there was simply no room for him to hop off. He tried. He flung his feet over the edge only to have them forced back on by the sheer mass of people. Who knows if anyone's luggage actually passed any of us, for everyone was watching this guy ride the belt until he went around the corner and I could no longer see him. I never did know what happened to that guy. Hopefully, someone eventually claimed him. 
Okay, I now literally have the best image in my mind possible. Just like thousands of people all crowded around a carousel, all pointing and laughing at this one entitled dude who is fuming, like trapped with loads of luggage, just like trapping him in. Can't stand up, can't get out of what he's doing, just stuck on the carousel, going round and round. Everyone just laughing at him. Pretty incredible that this would happen. And um, if I was one of the crab members, I wouldn't let him out. I would actively keep him there and make him feel embarrassed as possible. That's just me, guys. Let's move on. Now moving on to our second story. Impatient Karen loses her job. For those not in the know, a mystery shopper is a person assigned by the company to make random unannounced inspections with regards to customer service and in general, the well-being of the company's employees and the store. Also, it is customary for the mystery shopper to blend in with everyday customers and not bring attention to themselves in a way that can be misconstrued as just another obnoxious and rude customer, i.e. act like a douche, get treated like a douche. So pretty much guys, this story is all about one of those mystery shoppers it's kind of like undercover boss you know someone assigned by the company to go into the store be like an everyday customer but really they're spying and making sure everything is okay when a big boss isn't really there it's a pretty clever idea kind of just a way to make sure that everything is going well day to day in your company without you know going there yourself and all the employees going oh wow that's the boss we're gonna be on our best behavior sort of thing it's kind of like a surprise inspection but anyway guys the mystery shopper woman of this story didn't get that memo one day around lunchtime my boss was in the back having her lunch i was out on the shop floor and serving customers an unusually high amounts but nothing that i couldn't handle on my own when in walks this karen as i was serving the queue of customers i half-heartedly said hi welcome to the store i was hungry while still serving and ringing through items karen said Humph. and then under her breath it's polite to make eye contact alarm bells already she hums and haws while i'm making my way cautiously and correctly through the remaining customers all the while she's making daggers and eventually storms off in a huff looking around like i can come away from paying customers just to help her come on as the last two customers make their way to the till she joins the queue with a whole two items with an audible oh ffs The customer I'm serving looks at me with a what the actual F expression and I nod. So not even one minute in, the Karen says, this is freaking ridiculous. Finalizing the payments before moving on to the next customer, the till decides to freeze and it takes a few minutes for it to reboot. I make my apologies and the customer I'm serving is fine with it, along with the customer behind. Then Karen says even louder, Oh, for frick's sake, the service in this establishment, she was posh, is absolutely freaking ridiculous. I'd had enough. With my best but annoyed customer service voice and smile, I said, Listen, as you can clearly see, I am dealing with other customers. I am the only staff member on the floor as my boss is at lunch. The till has decided to not play nice. And to be perfectly honest with you, I am well within my rights to refuse you service and ask you to leave as your attitude absolutely stinks. What? You can't talk to me that way. Don't you know who I am? I really don't care to be honest. Now I am once again asking you to leave. Uh, to be fair, that does seem a little bit harsh from OP. She's only, you know, getting a little bit annoyed. It's not the end of the world. Not doing anything that, you know, you'd want to ban her from the store because of. Anyway, she storms off in the foulest mood you'll ever see. And guys, remember, this person, this Karen, is employed by the shop to go in and, you know, pretty much spy. The customer I'm serving says, Thank Christ you said something. I was ready to smack her. We both laugh and I finish both services and thank them for their patience. They both worked in another store where we're based. Now my boss has finally finished her lunch at this point and has come through the front. Oh, I meant to say there's going to be a mystery shopper in at some point. Don't know who, but please be on your best behavior. Oh, frick. Okay, so maybe they do know that a mystery shopper is coming in, but they don't know who it's going to be. I quickly tell her what happened and explain that I was busy, but not too busy. And I needed to involve her and the conversation as it happened. And lo and behold, just as I finished telling her, in walks the regional manager for the company. OP, back office now. I'm dead. Now, knowing that the regional manager has a tendency to be a hothead in this situation, I was pooping bricks at this point. Thankfully, I've had a reasonably good working relationship with him up until this point, so it really could go any way. 
Now, the regional manager was actually pretty calm. What happened? I explain everything. From the moment the Karen entered to the moment she stormed off, almost taking the door with her, and the fact that I had witnesses that worked in the immediate vicinity. The full shebang. The regional manager sighs and nods. I'm finally glad that someone else has the balls to stand up to my wife. What? The look on my face said it all, and he starts to laugh. Please, accept my apologies. I'll let your boss know that there's not to be any repercussions of this. And I think it's time to let my wife know it's time to find more suitable employment. Oh, wow. Um, thanks. I was speechless. He then hands me a £20 gift card for the Moore's Cafe and said lunch was on him. The best coffee and chicken bacon club sandwich i'd ever had yeah let's be honest um i'm not really sure that this karen is doing her role very well at all i think the whole point of a mystery shopper i'll be honest guys i've never actually heard of one before but it you know it makes perfect sense kind of spying on your own company to to make sure everything is you know going well as you as you'd like as the regional manager would like um the main role surely is just to blend into the background be completely inconspicuous not cause a fuss and just ultimately kind of gain information and report back to the regional manager and say you know what everything is under control everything is going well all the staff are polite everything is working smoothly or report about the opposite you know just just make sure that you are not the center of attention that is the point you need to be like a comedian blend in maybe you know ask a couple of questions speak to the, all the employees because that's what a normal customer would do you know as you're going through the till getting your stuff speak to them say you're having a nice day see if they're polite doing their job correctly all that sort of stuff but don't like start mouthing off and, and complaining after two minutes what's that all about you just know as well that this boss was like oh you know what Come on then wife. I'll give you a job. Uh, yeah, just go go into stores. Please be calm. None of your usual entitled Karen behavior. Just be calm. Report back to me with some behavior if anything is awry. And she can't even do that. She has to, you know, she can't help but, but act entitled, be entitled and say, I want to be served now. You're not even there to get, for, you're not shopping. That You're not a normal customer. You're there to do a job and to, to gather information and report back. Why are you, you know, mouthing off? I don't get it. But um, yeah, <laughs> it's quite embarrassing to be employed and then fired by your own husband for a job that is so easy. Let's be real realistic wow just just so so good from her drunk entitled mum thinks it's my responsibility to watch her kids while she continues to drink like millions of other people at the beginning of the pandemic i lost my job fortunately i managed to obtain another job delivering desserts for a bakery now this particular shop was really small but it had two small counters in the front window facing outside Pre-pandemic, these counters would allow a couple of people to sit and enjoy their sweets while watching the world go by. During the pandemic, our city allowed no indoor dining, so we could have customers come in and order, but they had to leave the shop to eat elsewhere. Additionally, last fall, the city shut down the streets in front of the shop to allow the numerous restaurants on the street room for outdoor dining. On slow days, I would use one of the counters to set up my laptop to try and find another job, and also people watch. One particularly slow Saturday afternoon, I noticed two kids, probably four and six, running amok. These kids were annoying diners and just creating a nuisance, including pulling down some promotional material we had out front. I finally located their mother, the entitled mum of this story, who was sitting halfway down the block with someone else with several bottles of wine on the table. Finally, I had a delivery just as the very visibly intoxicated entitled mum comes into the shop with her two kids. I hop on my bike and take off. About 10 minutes later, I come back and immediately see these two kids are at the counter and it's a complete disaster. There's ice cream all over the counter, the window and the wall and the entitled mum is nowhere to be seen. I walk into the back and ask the shift lead why the kids are eating in the shop. He doesn't even bother to look up from his phone and shrugs his shoulders. At this point, I'm irritated because these kids are destroying the front of the shop and I'm going to have to clean it up. I decide to go out and find and confront the entitled mum. I say to her, I'm sorry, but because of city ordinances, your kids cannot eat inside the shop. Where are they supposed to eat then? The entitled mum slurs back. She's literally sitting at a foretop with two empty chairs. Well, they can eat anywhere other than inside the shop. I'm busy right now. As she takes another very healthy drink of wine. If you cannot get them right now, I'm going to have to call the police. We can't risk a fine enclosure because your kids are eating inside. 
Oh, F you. At this point, I start walking back to the shop. The entitled mum must have realized that this could end very badly for her if she doesn't get her kids and stumbles after me. At this point, all she needs to do is go into the shop, tell the kids to grab their ice cream sandwiches and leave. Or just leave the ice cream sandwiches for me to clean up. But no, she takes it to the next level. She walks in and grabs the first kid's ice cream sandwich and loudly slurs, That butthole is making me throw away your ice cream. She then proceeds to slowly walk the 10 feet across the shop to the trash can while just glaring at me. All the while, the kid pleading with her not to throw his ice cream away. The first ice cream sandwich goes into the trash can. She then slowly walks back over to the second child, grabs his ice cream and proceeds to again keep glaring at me while she walks back to the trash can and throws it away. By now, both kids are absolutely hysterical. A potential customer walks in, sees what is happening and promptly leaves. In one last act of defiance, the entitled mum grabs the napkin holder, throws it on the ground and drunkenly screams at me, F you, I'll get you fired. Finally, she was gone. I walked into the back to see the shift lead still firmly planted on his butt looking at his phone. I grabbed the cleaning supplies to start cleaning up the store. Now, I've not worked in the restaurant or hospitality industry since I was in college in the late 90s, and I never remember putting up with rubbish like this back then. Honestly, guys, the idea of a woman being out in a public place, just getting absolutely obliterated on alcohol, and then being, you know, in charge, responsible of her kids at the same time is disgusting. It doesn't even matter if she's entitled or not. Like, just that idea is ridiculous. And realistically, no sane person or no good parent would ever do that. I mean, you're in danger your children so much by by putting yourself in that position it's so stupid honestly i know it's pretty deep but if i was in that situation and you see this woman just downing wine and her kids just as you said running a mock call the police it's not your problem i know it's like you probably don't want to do it and it seems a little bit harsh but call the police because honestly these children are in danger with their mum just getting smashed on wine not even looking after them now moving on to our second story of today's episode entitled aunt nearly ruins free vacation Little disclaimer guys, this story happens before the pandemic. I love Ireland. My grandmother told me stories and inspired a pride and love for my heritage and taught me how to properly represent myself. Now I'm not Irish, but my ancestors were. Years ago, I started studying Gaelic, the Irish language. Now I'm still very novice at speaking and understanding it, but I do enjoy trying to learn and I like hearing it spoken. I was starting to think about another trip when one of my cousins contacted me. We never had much contact because we grew up so far apart, but I liked him well enough. He'd started learning Irish and was interested in having someone to practice with. So we did. We helped each other and learned together. It's a difficult language and like I said, still very novice. Well, I was planning a trip to Ireland. I've been a few times, but this time I wanted to stay in the Gaeltacht, the regions of Ireland where Gaelic, Irish, is primarily spoken instead of English. The people there do speak English, but as a second language. I thought my cousin would enjoy a trip as well. I spoke with my uncle and we made a deal. Since my cousin was in his first year of college, I told him if he finished his freshman year with at least a 3.5 GPA, I would pay for him to go with me. He worked really hard and was mostly taking honors classes and came out with a 3.4. I of course let him feel a little grief from trying so hard only to come up short, then I told him he'd still be going with me. You could say I shouldn't have, but he genuinely worked very hard and I believe he earned it. Plus, he's a good kid and I want to encourage him to keep working hard in his education. Now, for a quick little bit of background on my cousin's parents. Aunt Kat and Uncle Tom are people of limited means. Not speaking poorly of them, Uncle Tom works hard to give them a comfortable life. Aunt Kat is my dad's sister, and the grandmother I mentioned earlier is her mum. Uncle Tom is the son of Italian immigrants. While trying to put my cousin Ben through school, they couldn't afford to send him on vacation. But I assured them the whole trip was on me. I actually was splurging a bit, because I wanted it to be an awesome experience for my cousin. I got business class seats for the flights, and booked two rooms at a really nice bed and breakfast. I was excited, but my cousin was so pumped he was shaking. Then Uncle Tom calls me and asks if there was any chance I could include him and Aunt Kat on the trip. 
He understood it was a huge thing to ask and stressed that it was no pressure. I thought about it a bit and decided I would bring them along. My grandmother would have praised the generosity. I told them that since it was so close to the trip, I could only get them economy seats. And he said it was fine. I also managed to book another room at the B&B. I also stressed that the purpose of this trip was for cousin Ben and I to interact with native Irish speakers, but there would be time for some sightseeing. We could also visit the town our ancestors came from in County Mayo. This is where I learned what a Karen my aunt Kat is. It started at the airport. I'd managed to upgrade their tickets to Economy Plus, which on an international flight is not too bad. But my aunt was saying that my cousin and I should sit there while the grown-ups get the nice seats. I was 30 at the time and my cousin was 19. My uncle looked embarrassed. My aunt told cousin Ben to give her his ticket and he almost did. I had to nip this in the bud. I paid for all these seats so I will determine who sits where. Those are still nice seats. Enjoy your flights. Yeah, I mean, Economy Plus on an international flight. I've done it before. It's very nice. A big upgrade on economy, that is for sure. Aunt Kat then said, Oh, so since you paid for everything, you think you're in charge? Yes. And if you don't like it, you can go home. She huffed, but stayed silent. Uncle Tom gave me a wink, and Cousin Ben apologized for his mum's behavior. At one point, he quietly said to himself, She always does this. Great. We arrive in Ireland and took a cab to our bed and breakfast. The first two days were great. Cousin Ben and I went out and tried to awkwardly converse with the locals who were as gracious as you could wish for and helped us a lot. We mostly did stuff separately from my aunt and uncle, which was fine. But I noticed my aunt was getting a little edgy. And on our fourth morning at breakfast, she snapped. One of the girls working at the bed and breakfast brought them their breakfast and apparently greeted them in Gaelic, like she did every morning. That was the point where everyone there began to hear, does anyone in this freaking place speak English? Jesus Christ, it's like being in a foreign country. My grandmother lived her whole life here. She can speak English. Why can't you? Before I could appreciate that my aunt had actually said it's like being in a foreign country, I was out the door and running across the yard. I apologized to the poor girl and gave her a 50 euro note, then went to talk to my aunt. Do you not understand what I told you about this part of Ireland? I thought I explained that Irish Gaelic is the primary language spoken here. Most people will start interactions in Irish and it's a big part of the B&B's business too. She just sat in her room looking huffy and Uncle Tom told me he'd handle it. He'd fallen in love with Ireland and had been thoroughly enjoying the trip, so I let him deal with it. Then I went to talk to the landlady to ensure we wouldn't be thrown out. Now she of course didn't tolerate mistreatment of her staff, but she said if it did happen again, they would have to leave. That day, I had rented a car and would be driving out to where my ancestors originally lived near Castle Bar. I invited my aunt and uncle, but my aunt just stayed in the room, so the three of us went out without her. It was an emotional thing visiting that little village, and I can't describe it, but my cousin and I both felt like we could feel the spirits of our ancestors there. I know it's corny, but it was powerful. We found the graves of some of them as well. Now my uncle was mostly silent and respectfully let us experience it. Later, he told us about his parents leaving Italy. The rest of the trip was pretty quiet, but Aunt Kat never left the room or spoke to anyone there. Although she did charge a pretty expensive lunch to the room on my card through a local high-class restaurant. Uncle Tom offered to pay me back for it, but I refused. We flew back and the whole flight, my cousin was going on and on about how amazing it was. It was clear that he'd found a new love for international travel. So I told him if he keeps his grades up, maybe we could go again the next summer. All right, and there we go. Um, Yeah, hopefully you guys can go on more fun trips abroad, not just to Ireland, but to other places as well. Clearly, you've, you know, you spark some love for traveling there from your cousin Ben. But um, yeah, maybe maybe next time don't include, well, at least not both parents. Tom can come. He seems like a good bloke, but um, Aunt Kat, nah. If she's just going to go to another country, well, I mean, country, she said she didn't even realize it was a foreign country. Incredible scenes. But if she's going to go and just sit in her room and, you know, just be horrible and miserable the whole time, no point 
point in her going anywhere. But yeah, instantly when when she said, "Okay, because we're adults, because we're the older ones, we get to sit in the uh, in the business class seats," despite her getting a free vacation. From that point on, it was going to be pretty obvious that yeah, this was not going to be a smooth sailing trip with her. That is for sure. Entitled grandmother makes my brain collapse. Literally, this happened two years ago. I was sharing an apartment with a friend. Now my ex friend from high school. Let's call her Flo. Flo was really lazy. She wouldn't clean the apartment or even wash her own dishes. And when I'd ask her to do it, she'd get mad and act like a freaking child. After a year, she decided to move. That's when the entitled grandmother of this story appears. She demanded for me to pay back her part of the money that she paid to me for Flo's rent and also to pay the money she put in to pay half the deposit. I put in the other half. I didn't agree with this. So for a period of a month approximately, Flo and her entitled grandma harassed me, coming into my apartment at any time without letting me know they had keys, threatening to call the police, to call my mother, etc. The entitled grandma also threatened to take my furniture as a payment if I didn't give her the money. They caused me a lot of stress. I couldn't leave my place because I didn't know when they'd be back. And as both of us, Flo and me, were in the contract, I couldn't call the cops because it was still Flo's place too. One morning, the entitled grandma came around at around 7 a.m. I was sleeping, so it took me like 50 minutes to get up and get dressed. And when I got out of my room to say hello, the entitled grandma was really angry because she'd had to wait and not so subtly called me a prostitute. She hinted that I was working nights as a sexual worker and that's why I wasn't awake when she came. At 7 freaking a.m. by the way, completely by surprise, she didn't even call. We had a big argument because she's a crazy woman and she even had the courage to blame me for the death of her husband that occurred like five months ago at that time who was sick from the heart for about five years, even before I met Flo. The guy died in hospital because of his illness. It really had nothing to do with me. I actually only saw him about two times in my entire life. Now, going back to the origin of the title, entitled grandmother makes my brain collapse, literally. The next morning of that argument, I woke up and I was seeing double. I couldn't focus my eyes. I panicked, ran to the mirror, and saw that my left eye was completely crossed. I looked like a person with strabismus. So I rushed to the doctor and he told me that the stress that perhaps had been caused by the entitled grandma and Flo was causing me to make my brain lose control of my eye and that I needed to slow down and relax because the thing in my eye could be dangerous if it went on for a while. And that's my story about how a crazy woman caused me nervous strabismus. Guys, before we even dive into talking about this one, I uh, firstly got to find out exactly what strabismus means. I have no idea what it is, never heard of it, and I assume the majority of you haven't heard of it as well. Let's go to Wikipedia. All right, so, oh my God, look at that photo. Strabismus is a condition in which the eyes do not properly align with each other when looking at an object. The eye that is focused on an object can alternate. The condition may be present occasionally or constantly. Okay, L yeah, that photo is a bit mad. Um, Stress can do that to you. That's crazy. I had no idea. Wow, that must have been a, a horrifically stressful, you know, incident or event that played out over a number of weeks, OP, for you to end up, you know, having this sort of condition. I hope it's fixed now, by the way. It says it's only temporary. Well, it can be temporary. I hope it was for you because you're looking like that for your life. That's not good. Now moving on to our second story of today's video. Entitled mother tries stealing my kayak from my car roof. There was a sale today at a warehouse type store that ends with co. Brand new kayaks were being sold for super cheap and fully equipped. We arrived a few minutes before opening and the staff pointed us to where we could get a kayak. There were only 18 available and only three were left. We took one and 15 minutes later, they announced that there were no more kayaks available. Now, some people were disappointed, but no one really made a fuss about it. No one except Karen. She started huffing and stomping her feet in front of the entrance staff, claiming that you shouldn't advertise kayaks if you don't have enough for everyone, and that she deserved to have a kayak because they're just so expensive and I have a family to feed. How does that make any sense, by the way? The staff politely explained that they would receive some more over the weeks and that she could come back at that time. She waved her hand at the staff and made her way back to her car. At that point, me and my mum were loading the kayak onto the top of our car. 
My mum went into the store to get some groceries and I stayed in the car as I wasn't feeling well About 10 minutes later, I hear rattling coming from the side of the car I took a look and there was the entitled mum with two of her crotch goblins trying to undo the straps and take the kayak I jumped out of the car and said pretty loudly. May I help you? Here's the conversation that followed go away. We're just loading our kayak onto our car Yeah, that's my car. I'm gonna have to ask you to leave or i'm calling the cops Uh, Can't you see i'm a struggling mum? I just need the kayak to make my kids happy. Look at them. They're so sad not to have one Her kids were still trying to undo the straps which they were barely able to reach Please take your hands off the straps kids. That's my car. Don't you talk to my kids that way I'll have you arrested for something. I can't say in fear of being demonetized But have a look at the screen now if you want to know what I can't say I just want the kayak and then we'll go. Why can't you do a good gesture for us? Because it's mine and you're crazy lady. I didn't even touch your kids I'm giving you one last chance to go back to your car or i'm calling the cops The entitled mum stood there with her arms crossed and gave me a defiant look. That was all I needed, and I called the cops. They arrived maybe 10 minutes later, and the entitled mum had gotten back to trying to untie the straps. I let her do it because I thought the cops would see her and it would just be more proof. And gosh, was I right. As soon as they stepped foot outside of their car, they asked the entitled mum to get away from my car, and they wanted to ask her a couple of questions. She huffs and tells the police that the kayak is hers and that she paid for it I just show them my receipts and they say it's all okay as they saw her untying the straps They asked if I wanted to press charges and I said heck yeah at that point My mum was back and after a brief explanation We loaded the groceries and drove away the police stayed with the entitled mum And we could hear her screaming and whining about my kayak being stolen and how she will be doing something about this Me and my mum just laughed and i'm currently enjoying a relaxing fishing day in my kayak Well, it's great to hear there was a positive ending to this story This one actually reminds me of something that happened to me in my life I guess my family really more than me, but um, I was involved Uh, i'm pretty sure we were at some sort of service station somewhere getting a bit of food on some family trip And we all had our bikes on top of the car on a bike rack and um, me and my sister for some reason were still in the car I think just us two my parents might have gone inside to get something come back out or whatever When they came back out, there were only three bikes on the car My mum's bike wasn't there now. We're pretty sure what might have happened is somebody Without me and my sister knowing for some weird reason had just you know come up by the back of the car Probably so we couldn't see and just taken my mum's bike off the car But we're not exactly sure we did actually end up going back the way we come along the motorway Trying to look if the bike had you know maybe fallen off as we were driving or something But we would honestly have heard it if you know if you're driving along and something falls off your car You're gonna realize aren't you let's be honest. It's a bike. It's not like a little feather Um, and we couldn't find it So we're pretty sure to this day that uh, yeah Someone had just come along taking the bike off the car whilst we're in the service station i just don't know how me and my sister didn't realize thankfully in this story op did realize because it's pretty obvious but yeah to this day i don't know how we didn't realize that someone had stolen the bike so there's still that little part of me that is not entirely sure but um i think that's what happened in that situation and now moving on to our final story of today's episode entitled group tries to steal the garage we rented my wife and i both ride motorcycles and we've started doing track days together We've rented a garage next to our friends so we can hang out between sessions Renting a garage is more than $50 per day But it means we have space out of the sun power for the tire warmers and plumbed airlines for setting tire pressures or running tools We think it's worth it We showed up for our track day and our assigned parking spot for the garage was filled with other trucks and trailers And someone had set up in our garage. They were still unloading more bikes and tools The guy even put down a rug The head guy of the group said he'd rented the garage for the following two days race days and wanted it for the track day for testing and tuning his bike He said he had a garage for the day booked at the far end of the track and it's okay You can go and use that one like it was a done deal I told him no that we'd booked and paid for this garage for most of the season for a reason He got huffy and said he didn't want to move all his stuff But I was done at this point. We needed to unload and the trailer was blocking the paddock road I told him sorry, but that's not my problem. He knew what garage he booked He saw the reservation posted on the wall with our names and decided to move in regardless 
Plus, he had a garage to use. It just wasn't in a prime spot. I pulled the car in behind their truck, close enough to block the tailgate so they couldn't set up the ramp to get the other bikes out, and began unloading our own gear into the garage. He finally packed up, and his friends stopped unloading. Yeah, I mean, you know you haven't rented that garage. You see it's reserved in the windows. It's obviously going to be reserved. You've got your own one down the line. What's the... Like... I, I, I don't know why you would even bother like how far away is your other one? How you know inconvenienced are you gonna be by going to the one that you actually bought or rented? I just you're setting yourself up for failure and a massive loss of time because it sounds like a pretty popular spot You know, you have to reserve a garage There are lots along a big old line and and you can't just jump in Why would you why would you then try to steal someone else's knowing full well that it's a very high chance that they're gonna come and Want to use it given they've reserved it and their names on it. I just don't know because you're just i mean you're costing all your mates loads of time by setting up getting stuff back in the garage going down to your actual garage it just seems like you're costing your mates loads of time and losing it because you know you'll be putting all your stuff in someone else's garage then oh no what a surprise just to put it back in the truck go down to your actual garage put it in that knowing this group they'll probably just try and steal someone else's garage as well i mean lots of garages going on um <laughs> weird one again how trying to sell a wee to a friend ended up with me losing money and burnt bridges so I've been trying to leave this whole mess behind and I figured ranting about it on the web could help now I know there were probably many things that I did wrong or could have handled better So I'll accept any criticism wholeheartedly get comfortable guys. This is a long one That's what she said for some backstory. I've been friends with this guy Let's call him sid for what would have been seven years if the following events didn't happen Since I saw him as such we did many activities together many hangouts and sleepovers in my house He hardly ever invited me to his and even him staying for a week after his dad kicked him and his mum out of the house Needless to say we were close at the time Which is why I had such a hard time putting my foot down and even cutting ties with him throughout all of this Prior to this mess, I've been thinking of selling my Wii console, along with two controllers and 30 plus games, for a while, but I used to always set it aside or just forget about it. Around July of last year, because of the virus, I decided I could use the money, so I started the process of actually selling my Wii. I researched a bit to set a price. 8,000 to 9,000 Argentinian pesos, so roughly 85 to 95 US dollars. I'd seen similar bundles nearing those prices online. Note, I know that some numbers in the story may seem messed up, but so is our economy, so please just roll with it. Oh my god. Anyway, on to the story. Sid had already shown interest for the Wii, but because I wanted to sell it for good money and not take it out of a friend's hands, I, for whatever reason, told him that I would most likely look for a buyer on the internet. After much insisting on his part, I decided to sell it to him. Discounted, of course, because we were friends at the time. Instead of going for the original 8,000 pesos, I lowered it to 6,500, so around $70. He actually tried to talk me into taking 6,000, but I took it as a joke and brushed it off, telling him the price was firm. Even when I'd made it clear how much it was, he had a second problem. He said his girlfriend didn't like the idea of him spending that much. Yes, I now know that sounds dumb. As always, hindsight is 2020. For reference, he didn't live with said girlfriend just yet, and they've been dating for about a year. Not much of a reason to have a say on how he spent his money. Whatever, he wanted to cut me a deal. He'd at first pay me one and a half thousand pesos for the Wii, and then 500 each month. So that would be $16 up front, and then $5 monthly, until the full price was paid off. I decided to just take it. Like I said, I needed the money. The second problem was after we made the transaction. Since I lost the original box for the Wii, I decided to put the console, the accessories, and the games inside a set of three boxes, as neatly as I could. I also, of course, turned on the Wii to see if it still worked, and ran all of the games through it the night before. I did my best to make sure everything was in condition, which it was. The only exception was the charger, whose cable had a bit of plastic recoil from the transformer, so its wires were visible. Now, I had offered to fix this, but Sid said he'd handle it. Well, after a while, he came to pick it up. Sid then sent me a message complaining that the charger's cable had broken. The messages had an accusatory tone, as if it were my fault, and not because he took the console without much care. That is the opposite of what I warned him to do when he took it, by the way. However, reluctantly, I agreed to pay half of what it would cost to fix it. Other than that, things seemed to be going well. 
I took the 1500, we split the cost of the fix, which is 500 pesos each. I took note of how much Sid owed me after this so I wouldn't forget, and I waited. And I waited, and I waited for six to seven months. In said time, I ended up losing my job and getting a gig that doesn't pay as much. I told Sid many times to please either give me at least part of what he owed me or tell me when he could do it because I was having a bit of a hard time. What was he doing in the meantime, you ask? Well, he was going out with friends, including but not limited to our friend group, buying gifts for his girlfriend and taking her on dates, and he freaking bought an apartment. Yeah, you heard me right, guys. He hadn't finished paying me back before settling a deal to move into an apartment, including the obvious deposits, rent, and utilities, which he actually used as an argument to justify why he didn't have money. Needless to say, I got annoyed more and more as we approached February, with me not receiving another cent from Sid. All right, so at this point, Sid is saying that he's not able to pay back $5 a month but he is able to buy an apartment. Okay, very interesting, Sid. Finally, during a phone call, he mentioned that he could finally give me the 2,000 that he owed me. The thing is, if you kept up with the math, he actually still owed me 4,500. So not only did he keep me waiting for half a year, but he tried to lowball me for a second time. I cut that conversation short, hoping I'd misunderstood something. But no. I later reminded him to please let me know when he could hand me the 4,500 pesos he'd yet to pay me. He started arguing that it was 2,000 because he'd given me the 1,500, then 2,000 out of the total of 6,000, which I hadn't even agreed to. I tried to argue that 6,500, which was the original price, minus 500 for the charger fix, minus 1,500, what he gave me, equaled the remaining 4,500. But no, he was convinced he'd actually paid me more, even though he hadn't. After a short back and forth, he basically texted me that he was sick of arguing and to go to his house the next day to get the Wii and give back his one and a half thousand pesos, which he at first said was more. The thing is, I couldn't gather the money unless I managed to sell the console again. So I said that I'd given the money as soon as I could get it. He either didn't acknowledge that statement or chose to ignore it and just said that he'd give back the console and to hand back the money. I was so frustrated that my mum noticed something was wrong and asked me what happened. After I told her, she sat me down and helped me realise that Sid was an exploiter. I'd been there for him more times than I could count, done so many favours, and here he was, screwing me over. She was pretty mad about it too and asked me if I wanted her to come with me for support the next day. But I said that wasn't necessary. I still had her drive me there because I ended up running late to the time Sid had set for me to come round. Now, here is where I very likely messed up. I went the next day and took the console back, but I didn't have the money. I'll admit that this was because I obviously couldn't get it on such short notice, but also because I felt it was hypocritical of him to keep me waiting for my money for six to seven months, yet expect me to get it at the drop of a hat. Yeah, I mean, in my opinion, guys, that is completely fair enough. Once I got to his place, Sid nonchalantly gave me the console in a suspiciously small bag. I didn't pay much attention to that detail, since I was tired of this whole ordeal and wanted to get it over with. He demanded the money and got offended when I said I didn't have it. Being almost out of patience, I answered, Look, you've kept me waiting for six months for this. Give me at least a couple of days. Then I got in the car and left. Now, while in the car, I decided to actually check the bag Sid had given me more thoroughly. That's when I noticed it. The 30 plus games that I'd given Sid, all inside of their boxes, paper envelopes I brought them in, were now 10 CDs tucked into a package. I called Sid, fuming, and asked him where the missing games went. He had sold them each for 10 pesos, not even a tenth of their actual worth, to pay for his half of the cost to fix the charger without telling me. I just blew up and told him that selling the Wii would be much harder now, then demanded he got the games back. His only answer was, give me the one and a half thousand pesos and I'll get you the games. Now, all of this was on speakerphone, since I had my phone in one hand and the bag with the Wii in the other. So after hearing this, my mum had also had enough. She grabbed the phone out of my hand and tore into him as well. I ended up blocking his contact after I saw a text of his that read, 
If I give you something, you're supposed to give me the money, which he'd sent before the call. I was just tired of this train wreck of a deal and wanted to talk it out after taking some time to clear my head. The thing is, Sid didn't give me any time. He went on the group chat we had with our friends to throw me under the bus, claim how much of an idiot and a scammer I was, and then kick me out of the group. They didn't even know what was going on, so my friends got quite a surprise. To not make a long story longer, someone else put me back in the chat. We discussed it, and, well, some harsh language was thrown around. Sid defended himself, saying he didn't pay me back because he had to fix his apartment, and that I should be more sympathetic. The thing is, he decided to get the apartment on his own. I didn't see how I was to be held liable because he got a place he couldn't afford. He also didn't tell me any of this. He kept me in the dark, waiting for a payment that I never got. In the end, I was willing to negotiate to get the games back, in exchange of giving Sid the 1500 pesos. He, however, wanted to cut all ties, because there is no friendship here. He didn't want the money back, nor have anything else to do with me. And honestly, I just accepted this. Not just because of the Wii issue, but this whole thing helped me look back on more trashy attitudes he'd had, and overall, him being a negative person. For instance, he once told me I had too high of a standard for going for girls I found pretty. Me being me. And now, I have a Wii with over half of the games missing. Which, as I later realised, he had factory reset. Something to note, the Wii was chipped, which means it had a program installed to run games that are not exactly original, but cheaper. This is common practice where I live, and the games usually work fine. Now, because of the reset, said program was gone, which means the games are basically useless. The cost to set it back up is currently 2,800 pesos, 1,300 more than Sid originally gave me. I lost money and games trying to sell this guy my console. As for Sid, I hadn't much news from him since I cut contact. Last I heard, he actually had a fight with another friend from our circle and left two group chats we were both involved in. So, that's the story of how a failed attempt of selling a console cost me a seven-ish year old friendship and made me decide I'll never sell something to a friend again. I'll admit, I was sad because of the outcome at first, but life goes on. I'll just try again when I get the Wii back in selling condition, then move on with my life. If you've listened to this whole story all the way to the end, let me tell you that you're a legend and I hope this story entertained you as much as it frustrated me. The main takeaway for me, guys, in this story is that OP, I'm sorry to say, but the thing that you had with Sid, it wasn't real friendship. Yes, you might have been friends for years, seven years, but it was such a one-way friendship that it really wasn't that, you know, mutually beneficial at all, was it? He was just using you, you were having to deal with all his rubbish and he was just pretty much just taking advantage of, of you existing existing whilst you were just you know lying down and letting him kind of walk over you like a mat not saying that's your fault at all but uh, maybe you should have realized earlier but even though you didn't this was a good event i reckon on the whole to make you to make you realize that this guy is not someone you want to be spending time with he's not a friend he's not someone you can trust and ultimately he's someone that's going to try and scam you and pretty much did I've got to say, though, OP sounds like, I mean, you'd love to be mates with him, wouldn't you? He's so caring. He's so kind. He gives you six to seven months to repay you. What a nice guy. And to be let down by someone like this, oh, I feel bad that, you know, people like OP, they're very few, they're few and far between. They're such rare people. So innocent, so kind, so generous. And to get walked over by people like Sid, and we should really just be protecting them and nourishing them as people is such a shame to see. But um, yeah, OP, if it's any consolation, I'd like to be friends with you. Uh, if you want a new friend, mate, I'm not desperate or anything. Just you sound like a good guy. All right, let's leave it there. <laughs> but if you transition, it'll be inconveniencing me. Hey, everyone. A while back, I posted in r slash am I the butthole about a person in my choir who wheedled their way into getting a solo performance without any agreement from the rest of the group. Now, I was deemed the butthole for not backing them up for said performance, but it didn't really matter in the end because I was in hospital for the duration of that concert anyway. But that's a whole other barrel of monkeys. I come here today with another story about this person and their entitled behavior. This happened yesterday and I'm still pretty irritated. So some backstory. The choir I'm part of is a queer-centric choir. It's supposed to be a comfortable and accepting place for LGBTQ plus folks. And it was. But the entitled person of the story frequently causes other people to be uncomfortable, annoyed, or just plain put off. 
They are extremely pushy, overly critical, and have a not so subtle habit of rolling their eyes and muttering under their breath when someone asks for help on their section's part. They're rude and pretty ignorant. There are so many more things, but I'm not here to write a novel, just a novella. I am an out and proud bi and trans person. With the whole being stuck at home during quarantine, I've had a lot of time to figure out myself and my identity further, and I've decided that I'm going to go to a gender counsellor and talk to them about starting HRT after lockdown is fully lifted. When I shared this revelation with my choir via Zoom meeting, almost everyone was really supportive, except for the entitled person. Their first reaction was, but you are really strong soprano. If you transition, you'll just be leaving me and one other member of the choir in that section. To be honest, I kind of expected them to say some BS like that, but I'm surprised how calmly I replied with, okay, but I'm not doing this in terms of what the choir wants. I'm doing this for me. Choir has always been secondary. The choir director, manager, and all other choir members backed me up in saying that. And the entitled person fell silent. I got no apology though. No acknowledgement of how rude they'd just been. They just sulked and didn't say anything more until the topic changed. I've been thinking of leaving the choir for a while now. Mainly because of this entitled person's behaviour. It's just not fun for me anymore. It's another reason to get stressed out and annoyed. And I'm not about that life. This is just another straw on the camel's back. And the next practice we have may just be the one where I return my music and quit. So yeah, I just wanted to get that out there. Maybe I'm being a bit entitled and bratty too for considering quitting, but come on, who says that to someone when they come out with that kind of news in an LGBTQ plus choir? OP, please, whatever you do, do not leave the choir. It sounds like it's fantastic. You're with a great bunch of people. And the only reason you may not be enjoying it for this one period of time is because of this one entitled person. I mean, come on, it's an LGBTQ plus choir. The whole point of it is being open with each other, you know, and, and accepting about, you know, it's like, sexuality i don't get it i just don't get it at all if anything surely it should be the entitled person that gets kicked out and not you having to leave seriously like it should be obvious to everyone look no one wants to kick anyone out of a group let's be fair enough on that it's not a nice thing to do but if they're the person that is causing other people like yourself to leave because you can't stand being in the same group as them then unfortunately they're the ones that need to go and i just hope the rest of the members of your choir see that and actually you know make sure that you're not the one that that leaves and that it's actually the other way around in the end now moving on to our second story she tried to invite a no contact guest for some context my family's a little awkward i'm limited contact with my mum due to years of abuse towards me physical and emotional and i'm fully no contact with my younger sister due to her being well a terrible person in general hateful super homophobic thinks people in the LGBT community choose to be victims because they like being treated badly, that being gay is a choice, that LGBT people don't deserve to be treated like actual people, etc. These are all things that she said to me, a member of said community. And my mum knows this. What a start to this story, my God. So a couple of days ago, my amazing future mother-in-law wanted to take me dress shopping to get ideas for a wedding dress along with my cool older sister. We debated whether or not to invite my mum, eventually deciding that the drama of not inviting her would be worse than anything she could do. We were waiting for my mum at a restaurant to meet up with her before dress shopping. And that's when I got a call from my older sister. She said, you might want to let mum know you don't want your younger sister coming with. She just said she's invited her. I hung up and called my mum, starting out with, no, my sister is not coming. And she immediately started in with a whining voice, making her voice sound like she was going to cry, begging me with phrases like, but why? And can't you just get along for me? And I know you had an argument. Yes, she called my younger sister, saying all those things to me, a simple argument. But can't you just move past it? And I already told her those topics are off limits. I don't see the big deal. I kept repeatedly saying no, but she kept getting worse. Her voice getting whinier, pleading with me and acting like I was ruining her entire day by not letting my younger sister come with. Finally, I snapped and said, no, mum, she is not coming. There was a beat of silence. Then, in the saddest, most dejected crocodile tear sounding voice I've ever heard, she replied, 
fine. Okay, I'll be there in a bit. Thankfully, that was the end of it. She arrived, we ate, she was cordial. But oh my god, the lion, the witch, and the audacity of this... <laughs> That's very good, by the way. She was only invited by a slim margin. Then she just turned around and tried to invite someone I'm no contact with behind my back? Yeah, there's a reason I'm limited contact with her. Yikes. Well then, a little bit of an LGBTQ plus theme to this video. Hope you guys are enjoying it. Um, It's very strange that two sisters can be obviously related and hate each other so much to the degree that, that this sister, OP's sister, well, I don't. to be fair, it's not even OP, is it? It's just her sister. Like, OP's a completely normal person. Seems pretty nice to me. Her sister's just off the rails. How can you be that mean and horrible and abusive towards your own sister? I don't get it. Especially, like, obviously, like, when you're kids, you might fight and stuff, but actually saying those horrible, abusive things about... Someone's sexuality, your sister's, I mean, it's just, it's unbelievable. I can't really understand what you would gain from that. I mean, she must genuinely believe the things she's saying because they're so outlandish that you wouldn't just say them for a bit of chat, would you? Or to make a joke. Just a horrible, abusive person. I'm sorry, OP, that that is your sister. And to be fair to your mum, whilst you're obviously still limited contact with her for a reason, I think she should probably understand that, that you don't want to see your younger sister who's the most horrible person that it sounds like ever existed. Because, come on, she's just horrible about everything that you, that you stand for and that you are as a person. I get it that your mum obviously wants her two daughters to be friends but after all the years of your younger sister abusing you she should probably see that that's not gonna happen and now moving on to our final story of today's episode you need your ada compliant stool but i'm tired for some background i'm a cashier at my local wally world most of the time the people that i work with are really nice and management is great however due to the nature of my store we occasionally get some crazy people this happened about a year ago at my store just before the shutdowns and mask wearing additionally i have a rare muscular disability so i have a stool that i purchased that i use while i'm working while i can walk short distances and stand for short periods of time i get in a lot of pain if i do it for a while I do have a wheelchair, but I typically don't use it at work since I don't walk too much at my lane and the stool is a lot less bulky. I also typically work a small, belted self-checkout lane. Now for the story. So I'm working at my typical self-checkout lane when Karen comes to check out with a mountain of groceries. This woman already looks like a typical Karen, complete with the haircut and everything. However, I don't like to judge people based on their appearances, so I greet the Karen warmly and with a smile. Hello, how are you? I'd be better if this store wasn't so freaking confusing. I couldn't even find the gift cards. What kind of a store doesn't have gift cards? I noticed that there was a gift card stand right next to my checkouts. I've got a stand right over here, if you'd like one. The Karen was looking at her phone. Good. Get me two Chick-fil-A $10 cards. And hurry, I'm so tired of standing. Now I knew that although it wasn't ideal, I could walk that far. Of course, just a moment, I say. I walk over to the stand, grab the gift cards, and come back to Karen putting my stool off to the side and sitting on it. Good, you're back. Ring up my stuff and tell me when you're done. I need to call my mother. I was dying on the inside because it's a self-checkout, but I didn't want to be yelled at any further. Mom, I'd be happy to help you scan your items, but I need my stool in order for me to do that. <laughs> Excuse me? I'm a paying customer. I'm tired and I want to sit. Now do as I say or I'll get you fired. My legs are starting to shake at this point and the pain is beginning in my knees and ankles. Mom, I have a physical disability and I use that stool to avoid getting hurt. If I stand for too long, I get in a lot of pain. Well, I had to stand for hours to get all of this and you're probably faking your disability so you can sit. Just check me out. Now, my nice supervisor, who must have heard all of the commotion, comes over and sees that I'm standing and obviously in a lot of pain. Hey, OP, what's going on? Why aren't you sitting on your stool? Finally, a manager, your stupid employee won't ring up my stuff and she's wanting me to give her my stool so she can sit on her freaking lazy butt. 
It was at this point that my legs give out and I fall to the ground crying in pain. OP, are you okay? My supervisor goes on his walkie-talkie and calls a code that means an employee is injured. Oh, don't be so dramatic. She's obviously faking it. Mom, she has a physical disability and needs that stool. Not to mention that you're at a self-checkout. If you want a cashier to check you out, you should head over to our staff registers. But I don't want to wait in that line. At this point, the manager of our store has come practically running from the back. What has happened here? Does she need an ambulance? I shake my head no, still crying. Meanwhile, Karen starts snapping at the manager. Hello, I still need someone to ring me up. My ice cream is going to melt. Mom, we have an emergency with our employee. We need to help her first. Once this has all been settled, I'll gladly help you. She's faking it. And besides, she's too fat for this stool anyways. Mom, get out of the store or I will call security. You do not get to talk about my employee like that. You have to check me out. It's the law. Leave now. The Karen then starts screaming at my manager that we clearly don't know who she is or what she can do to us if we don't check her out immediately. During her rants, my nice manager, finally having heard enough, turns to the supervisor. Supervisor, call security. He nods and calls for them on his walkie. Karen then shrieks even louder, demanding the number for corporate so that she can report how horrible this store is at customer service. Security shows up quickly and they almost drag Karen out of the store. The manager and supervisor make sure I'm okay and tell me to take the rest of the day off, fully paid. They then call my mum, who comes to pick me up and take me to the urgent care just to be sure. Now I'm fine, but they give me a note to take some time off to rest. Later, I was told that the Karen was banned from the store. Moral of the story, don't mess with disabled people's accommodations. I'm sorry, but the fact that that moral even needs to be written down by OP is actually shocking. Who would ever mess with a disabled person's stuff? It's honestly unbelievable. Um, I actually got quite into that story, taking the role of Karen. I was getting pretty loud. I had to calm myself down halfway through, but honestly, that story is just baffling. Incredible scenes again. Three very, well, ridiculous stories in this one, to be honest. I don't really know which one was worse. They were all pretty terrible. I mean, actually, guys, comment down below. Who do you reckon was the worst Karen out of the three we saw? I have to go with the second one, because that younger sister, like, her morals and her, her viewpoints on life are just honestly shocking, but the other two weren't that great either. Let's be honest. Let me know down below comment who was the worst one entitled mum tries to call the police on a homeless man just because he gets free donuts and her entitled kid doesn't so i own a few franchises and one of my franchises includes a dunkin donuts franchise here in los angeles so when i started my dunkin donuts franchise we'd often get a frequent customer named bill bill's a nice guy and he's around 60 years old i found out he's homeless and he's going through financial hardship I can relate a bit because, you know. I was born and brought up in poverty. There'd be days as a child where my family didn't know whether we could have a meal tomorrow. It was sad times, but I'm glad my dad gave me the best education he did. And because of that education, I'm now financially well off. I don't have to worry about money for me, my kids, or my dad's. Back to Bill. Now, since Bill is a nice guy, he never causes any trouble. And he's so positive and kind and loving. So... I told Bill to come in at closing time around 9 o'clock. At closing time, we don't have any customers and we're only half open. We don't make any fresh donuts and we turn off most of the lights, etc. So it doesn't look open, but for Bill, it's open. That means that every day at 9pm, Bill comes in. We've been doing this for a few years. I hand him a couple of water bottles and all the leftover donuts, a cup of coffee and leftover snacks just to make sure he doesn't go hungry. He always loves the food. And when I hand him the food, he becomes so happy and it makes me happy that I'm able to help him. Yesterday, we're doing the same thing, closing the store down, etc. Bill comes in at 9 p.m. and I hand him his food. Then an entitled mum and her entitled kid walk into the store. It's closing time. My employee asks her what she'd like. Then the entitled mum looks to her left and sees that I'm handing the donuts, food, etc. to Bill. And then I say goodbye to Bill, give him a hug, and tell him good night. 
However, the entitled mum quickly stops Bill at the door and then says, Wait, wait, hold up. You didn't pay for this. You stole all of this. I'm going to call the cops on you. I tell Bill, it's okay, man. It's fine. You go take care. I'll deal with all this. The entitled mum then starts yelling at me and telling me that she's going to call the cops on me because I gave free donuts to Bill. She then proceeds to tell me that I'm not allowed to give free food to homeless people. Now, it is true that I'm not allowed to, but it's Bill. He's cool and it's just free food to help him out. And it's my store anyways. The entitled kid keeps yelling. Mummy, I want donuts. I want donuts. I want donuts. On and on. The mum then demands that I also give her kid free donuts too because I gave free food to Bill. At that point, I just lost it and told her to get out of the store before I call the cops on you for trying to harass Bill and me. Then she leaves, finally. You know, this is like the first time I've seen a person who had a problem with a homeless man getting free food. Like there have been other customers who've seen me hand food to Bill before and they don't say a word. But this is the first time I've had an entitled mum get mad at me for giving free food and then demanding that I give her little kid free food. Like the entitlement. God dang. All right, then a very interesting story to start off today's episode First of all, is it actually illegal to give free food to homeless people if you're a business owner? I swear it isn't you can give out free food to normal people like at the end of the day when you know Maybe you run like a bakery or fresh food like a donut place and your stuff's gonna go to waste anyway So you just put it out for people to come and get so I swear that's not illegal Maybe i'm wrong there. Let me know in the comments guys, but um, that's a weird one first of all second of all I completely agree with you op. Why would anyone have any problem with giving free food to homeless people? I don't understand it they're the people that need it the most and you're the one that has a problem with it i mean it would be nice to get free food don't get me wrong you're not homeless you know you you have enough money to buy a donut surely right just go and buy some donuts or come back tomorrow with your kid and get them some donuts then i mean really trying to like you know pick food off of off of homeless people that, that need it so badly and and you're just there like oh no i want some of that as well don't give it all to him give some to me and my kid who have a happy financially stable life not that guy who really needs it why Now moving on to our second story and arguably guys this title is even more crazy than the first one Entitled mum calls me a racial slur and demands that I give up my earrings after getting me fired I work part-time as a waitress during my school holidays at a nearby restaurant All's good. I enjoy the people I work with hours and pay are reasonable and for context I'm asian and fairly skinny On one particularly busy lunch day, I just got out from the back and a table of three ladies and two kids were signaling to get my attention. I nod at them and head to their table shortly after. I noticed their food was finished and said, oh yes, do you need your bill? The first entitled mum replied, bill? (laughs) What? The second one then got involved. You expect us to pay after such poor service? Uh, I'm sorry, was there something unsatisfactory? Well, the food was lousy. I called you over to make a complaint. We are not going to be paying for this. I'm sorry to hear that it wasn't up to your expectations, mom. But you can't have the meal for free. Your complaint, though, is noted. Then the third entitled mum got involved. How dare you say such a thing? I know the owner of this restaurant. I'll call him right now and report your rude behavior. Now, my boss, Jay, is female. As I was with the table of entitled mums, I could see Jay at the far corner of the restaurant, happily enjoying her lunch. The third entitled mum pulls out her phone, smirking at me as she puts her phone to her ear. Hello? Listen, one of your employees is being very rude. Yeah, the anorexia-looking, insert racial Asian slur right here. Fire her. Oh, and the food was terrible. You ought to fire the chef too. We won't have to pay. Yeah? At the time, I didn't realize what she'd called me, as I was keeping an eye on Jay, who never answered her phone. My co-worker Kaz passed by though, and she heard what she said. The third entitled mum, smiling, then tells me I'm fired. It was quite the funny pretending of calling my boss, but I didn't call her out on it just yet. Kaz said, what's happening here? They aren't satisfied with their food and they're refusing to pay. Yeah, and you're also now fired. So stop talking and leave. Let your friend do the job that you can't do right. That's very rude of you to call her that, mom. I'm gonna have to ask you to pay for your meal and leave. Uh, We have another stuck up butt, do we? Yeah, why are you both so freaking rude? We're loyal customers. We just wanted to give helpful criticism about the food served here. And this is how you treat us? Now, I've never seen any of these three ladies before. 
Their kids look mighty uncomfortable at all that's happening. I look at Kaz and he looks over to Jay. People like you are such a thorn in society. I should get the both of you fired. That entitled mum then groaned as if she was displeased and muttered the word freaking again insert you know asian racial slur here i heard it loud and clear this time and my eyes widened when i realized she meant me kaz said louder this time mom please stop being racist and if you continue to refuse paying you but i know the owner here he should never have hired any of you worthless pieces of poo this of course attracts the attention of everyone in the restaurants jay included she gets up from her seats and starts to walk over. The first entitled mum says to me, Hey, you. Me? Yeah, those earrings. Take them off. Me and Kaz both say, Why? Why? Do you have any idea how customer service works? It's compensation for the terrible food and terrible service from you. You shouldn't be able to afford them anyway, and it would be perfect for my daughter. Now, my earrings aren't anything flashy. They're super simple stud type. I haven't got a clue what she thought it was worth. I really got angry at her demanding such an outrageous thing. Her poor kid was about to say something to her mum, but thinks better and looks away. I really feel bad for her. I also felt like I should have said nothing and let Jay handle it, but I lost it. You have no right to ask me for my earrings. They belong to my mother. Lying about knowing my boss? Yeah, BS on that too. Do you think it's right to stomp on other people to call them names? The second entitled mum started nudging the third entitled mum to call the police to report my harassment. But Jay swooped in, grabbing her phone. That won't be necessary, for I have already done so. You're going to sit here until they come and you'll leave my employees alone. The entitled mum is practically screaming for her phone back, calling Jay a bunch of names she was livid. Again, she pulls the stunt of knowing the owner, thinking Jay is just the manager, and threatens to get her fired too. No, I know the owner. That's me. I'd advise for you to kindly shut up now until the police arrive. All the entitled mums go red in the face, and I think I saw one of their kids practically die inside of embarrassment. I still very much wanted to punch the first entitled mum, and I would have done if it weren't for Cass holding me back. When the cops arrive, the entitled mums immediately try to push their overly exaggerated story of what happened. One even accused Cass of touching their daughter. I think I saw steam coming out of his ears at that point. Luckily though, several witnesses called out their bluff and our statements were also taken. The entitled mums sulkily pay for their meal and they were escorted out by the police. I don't know what ever happened to them. I'm sure Jay had pressed for more on them, but I never saw those ladies ever again. Come on, man. When your kids are so clearly dying of secondhand embarrassment, surely at that point, you know it's time to stop. I mean, how embarrassing for your kids to be more mature than you, to be the parent, really, in the relationship. It's weird, isn't it? When your kids have more common sense and more maturity than their own parent in a situation like this, something is truly messed up here. And I'm not really sure what it is, but but surely, like, it's just a weird relationship to have. Do you not reckon, though, guys, like, the, the actions of the Karens in this story is more suitable, is more what we'd normally expect from a kid, and the actions of the kids is what we'd expect from a normal typical parent their roles have just been completely flipped on their head role reversal it's very strange i feel so bad for the kids as op said but what can you do man what can you do if your parents going off on one like this you've got nothing can i just say by the way op well done for dealing with not one not two but three karens all in the same room. I mean, that is like some Avengers level stuff. I reckon that, you know, someone's going to be in contact very soon about a potential movie about this event because dealing with three Karens at once. Wow. That is um, exceptional stuff. Well done to you. Uh, lesser people would not have made it out alive. So pretty impressive stuff there. Entitled Karen wants free pizza forever. Gets banned instead. So I'm a store manager for a large chain pizza place that charges a bit more than the competition, but makes an arguably better product. We try to always believe the customer and make them happy if something is wrong. We have a loyal base of regulars who order often, as well as a lot of other business from randoms in the several nearby hotels. So it's Friday night, an entitled Karen calls in an order, a very simple pepperoni and jalapeno pizza. The driver delivers it. 30 minutes later, I'm asked to talk to an angry customer on the phone. It is the Karen. Is this the manager? I've been on hold for over half an hour. Now, that is impossible, but okay. I'm very sorry about that, mom. What seems to be the problem? I'm at the hotel and your driver was so rude and my pizza is burnt. I'm very sorry to hear that the pizza was not up to our quality standards. 
Can I make you another and send it out? No, don't bother. You've already ruined my kids' dinner and they're crying now. Give me a credit. Now that, by the way, is a major red flag. Okay, mom, I'll credit your number and when you order next, it will be free. I'm very sorry again. Have a good night. Whatever. Then she hangs up. I credit the number and think, whatever, that's the end of it. Roll on Saturday night. A colleague again says to me, hey, this lady on the phone wants to speak to a manager. Hello, thank you for holding. This is the manager. Are you all idiotic? How long does it take to answer the freaking phone? I'm sorry, what? You've only been on hold for a moment while my employee got me. Don't freaking tell me how long I've been on hold. I know how long I've been on hold for. I was groaning inwardly already. A fun customer. Yippee. Uh, I'm sorry, mum. How can I assist you? My pizza is burnt and you have the rudest freaking delivery driver. They practically threw the pizza in my face. A light bulb clicked at this story. I've dealt with this lady before. I'm sorry to hear that. I'll definitely talk to the driver about it. Um, can I make you a new pizza to replace the one you said is burnt? No, give me a credit. Okay, mom. Uh, to ensure our quality standards are being met, can I have a driver come and pick up the burnt pizza so I can talk to my production staff about it? No, we, we ate it. Wait, you, you ate the burnt pizza? Yes, we were starving and couldn't wait for a remake. Uh, just give me a credit. What, for the pizza you ate? Well, it was freaking burnt. Let me speak to a manager. I am the manager. No, I want to speak to your manager. You're being so rude and disrespectful. It's because I'm black, isn't it? You freaking racist POS. Mom, one, stop cussing. Two, I have no idea what you look like or who you are. But And she cuts me off. That's right, you idiot. You don't know who the frick I am, but you're about to find out. She then hangs up before I can say anything else. Being as she was extra, I let my district manager know about a possible complaint on my behavior. And I said what actually went down. Just as I get off the phone with her, I hear yelling in the lobby. It was her. Where is that idiotic racist manager? I step around the partition and see a cow of a woman wearing tacky bright green and orange with red shoes. What an image of an outfit that is, by the way, guys. That is astonishing. Can I help you? I'm already done with this person because I know exactly who it is. What, are you going to say something to me now? Give me a dang refund for my burnt pizza. And I want gas money as well for driving over here. You didn't pay for any pizza. It was free. And we don't reimburse gas for people driving to the store. What, you think this is a freaking joke? You're going to give me my freaking money or it's going to go off in this building. Now, I am 100% done at this point. Get out. What the F did you say? Get out of the store. You can't tell me to leave. This is a public space. No, mom, it's a private business and you are no longer allowed. I'm refusing to serve you. Leave now or I'll be forced to call the police. F you, F you. She continued to bellow this until the police arrive. I had to hear every sing-song version of F you for about five minutes. The police said to me, do you want to trespass, sir? Uh, yeah, uh, she isn't welcome here anymore, I replied. Now, the police in our town are super cool with us because we give them special discounts and occasionally donate a stack of pizzas to the precinct. The policeman, who was just outside the main door, easily heard me. Okay, so you are now being trespassed, he said to the woman. Do not come here, do not linger in the parking lot, or you will be arrested. This applies for every single chain of the pizza store, not just this one. The defeated look on her face when he said that was almost worth the cost of admission. Yes, not the most epic of endings, I know, but what can you do? I don't know, OP. Personally, I think that ending was pretty good, you know? Everyone got the justice that, that they deserved and, you know, you got on with your day and this horrible Karen was bad from your pizza store. Good stuff, no? I mean, maybe it might have been better had you got some sort of reaction out of her and, you know, had her actually arrested, but overall, pretty realistic ending to just say, no, you're bad for trespassing, do not come here again, and don't try and use the same techniques to get a free pizza time after time. How stupid do you have to be? Surely at that point, when you get the first credit for the pizza, you, you take the pizza and you run. You go to a different store maybe and try a technique again. You don't try it at the same restaurant with the same manager, the same staff. They're going to remember your voice. They're going to know who you are. They're going to say, oh, just the other day, someone used the same technique and got some credit off me. I wonder if they're the same person. Oh, wait, yes, they obviously are. How dumb can you be? Take the free pizza and run. Now moving on to our next story. Entitled mother gets her parcels delivered to my home. 
This story is something that happened to me and my fiance fairly recently. We recently bought our first home together in a nice quiet area in the north of England. If you're not familiar with the British postal system, basically we get letters delivered through flaps in our front doors and parcels that are larger than the letterbox get handed to us if we are in. If we're not in, they get given to a neighbor and we can collect them later. If no one can take them, they get taken back to the depot where they sit or are returned to the sender. So last month, we were just settling into our new home and my fiance bought some clothes online for a local gym he wanted to join. I was in the house the day of the delivery as I was expecting it and I'm working from home. When the delivery lady arrived with the parcel, there were two. I thought nothing of it at first and put it in the garage for my fiance to open later on. When he came in from work, he rushes to open his delivery like it was Christmas. And to his surprise, the second parcel was not for him. It had our address on, but no name. We were both confused at this point and thought it may be for one of the neighbors and that they would collect it later. Time goes by and we get a note through the door that reads, Hey, my son got his parcel delivered to your house. Call me on insert number here so I can come and collect it. Again, we thought it was a neighbor. So my fiance called the number for a woman to answer and say she'll be over shortly to collect the parcel. It turned out she lived across the town and her son chose our address to have it delivered to. Look, we thought this was weird, but we assumed it must have been a mistake. Anyways, we thought that was the last of it. But the next day, I get two more parcels for this lady's son. Again, with no name, but with our address on the package. At this point, I'm thinking it was a mistake on their part, or possibly they used to live here. Anyway, they came to collect their parcels and all was well. But guess what? More and more parcels over the next week arrive for this lady's son. At this point, I'm starting to get really annoyed by this, as even though I work from home, I can't leave meetings constantly to collect parcels that aren't even ours. So the next day, when the parcel lady comes, I just tell her, sorry, this isn't for me, and you're gonna need to return it to the sender. So off she goes and takes the parcel back to the depot. A few hours later, I hear a knock at the door, and guess who? The entitled mother is standing there with her son. Now, I hate confrontation, so my memory of the conversation is a bit hazy, but she was furious that we denied her parcel and now she had to wait for it to be re-delivered. I told her she needs to get her parcels delivered to her own home as it's weird and inconvenient for me. Like, I don't even know this lady. She then tells me it's easier for her to get them delivered to my home as I'm always in and she isn't. Now look, maybe this would be possibly okay if I was friends with her and she'd asked me beforehand, but she lives across town and chose a random address for her parcels. Anyways, she leaves and I think that finally, maybe this is the end of the story, but parcels keep showing up and for the next week, I politely tell the parcel lady they aren't mine and to return to sender. After a week of doing this, I stopped getting the parcels, so I guess she finally got the message. How entitled must this woman have been to think it's okay to get parcels delivered to a random person's home that she doesn't even know because it's easier for her? I really hope she wasn't doing this to someone else after me. But it was satisfying to know that she would have to wait twice as long for her parcels because they were returned to sender. All right, now this one, guys, I'll be honest, I don't understand this at all because how would you ever like initially find the address of this random person? So OP in this in this story, that's the address that this Karen has eventually found of somebody who's willing to open packages and, and have Karen collect them. But what if you were doing this just from the off? Like when you first started doing this, you have to select a random address, right? I guess relatively near to you, but not too near that you know the person. How do you know? My point is, how do you know that the address that you're sending your packages to, the person who lives there isn't just going to take the packages as their own? Like, how do you know they're just going to hold them? Why would they not either take it as their own if they were a bit, you know, naughty, I guess, or just say, no, that's not mine and return it? How can you know for sure that the person is just going to hold the packages and wait for you to come there? I don't get it. And also, is it worth all this fuss just because you're not at home when the package might come to know that you're going to be able to get the package off the person who is at home? Like, as you can probably tell, I have a lot of questions here about this story. It's a very, very strange one, I think. I, I'm, I'm just a little bit shocked. I don't really know what's going on there at all. I mean, just looking at the comments here on Reddit, a lot of people, uh, a lot cleverer than me, are saying maybe there was something illicit or illegal in the packages and that that was why this woman, this Karen, couldn't risk them going to her home. They were going to yours instead. 
And that would make a lot of sense because I'll be honest, guys, I don't understand why anyone would send packages to a different address. It makes no sense to me. Apart from if this might be the reason. If this is the reason, first of all, it makes complete sense. Second of all, OP, you're in danger, I reckon, because, you know, you, you can't be too careful with this sort of stuff. And if you're accidentally carrying or it looks like you're ordering illicit substances or whatever, you could be in big trouble. So, um, yeah, I reckon call the police on this one. This is why I read the comments of the Reddit always after I read a story, because everyone there is much more clever than me. And likewise, all you watching right now, you're also more intelligent than me. So if you guys have any better idea as to what might be going on here, please leave your comments, your conspiracy theories, your solutions to what OP could do down below. And uh, hopefully we can all find a, a common solution to what might be going on here, because it's very perplexing for, for sure. Entitled mother demands I give her another woman's breast milk for her five-year-old. So, I work in a daycare and I've got many stories where I've had to deal with entitled parents. Here we have what I like to call the breast milk entitled mother. The daycare I work at, as most daycares do, allows mothers to bring in their own breast milk. And we have a fridge to store it in. All must come with labels and will have their own place in the fridge. One day during drop-off, I'd just been given a bag of bottles of breast milk by a mother dropping off her baby. As I go to head to the kitchen, I hear the sound of an entitled mum screaming my name. Now, this mother was widely known by the staff and was widely disliked. She comes up to me and the conversation starts off with her complaining about the location of our school field trip for the older kids. The kids voted where they'd wanted to go and they voted the park. But she wasn't happy about that for some reason. I tell her what I'd already told her before. The kids picked where they wanted to go. I can't change that you're not happy with that. She huffed and then noticed the bag in my hand. And this is where this becomes insane. What's in the bag? She asks. Oh, this is a uh, breast milk. One of the other mothers left. I was just about to put it in the fridge. That's a lot of breast milk for one baby. Yeah, the mother wants to make sure she keeps a good stock here. So we always have some. So you must have plenty then, I guess. Then you can give me some for my son. Who, Billy? Yes, he's five. Yeah, but I read online that feeding your kids breast milk is good for them, even older kids. I'm sorry, but these belong to another mother and they're not mine to give away. Oh, I'm sure she wouldn't mind. You said she had plenty. She likely won't even notice. Yeah, uh, that's not gonna happen. Please sign your son in and just go. Oh, this is just ridiculous. They shouldn't be able to take that stuff in if they're not gonna share it with the other kids. And she walked out before I could reply to that. Okay, so you want to continue to give your child someone else's breast milk at five years old. <laughs> yeah, I'm, this this video is not started off very well, has it? What? What? I mean, seriously. Honestly, I read some of these stories and a lot of them are crazy. A lot of them are pretty stupid. But this... <laughs> What the? This has got to be up there, guys. I mean, you know what? I might do a top 10 ranking the dumbest stories I've ever read. This is going to be close to number one. What is this woman trying to do? <sighs> I'm moving on. Screw that. All right, then. Um, moving on from that story, let's get into the second one. I hope it's a little bit more normal. Anyway, the title is I Have a Long Lost Sister. So this story was around two years ago, back when I was 17. I had my own tennis clothing and equipment business. Till my 18th birthday, my dad owned the business as well. We were shared partners, but I mostly ran the shop by myself, which means the opening times were quite weird. It was opened Monday to Friday from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. Sometimes I'd open it later due to the train connections from my main workplace to the tennis club. And on Saturdays, it was open from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. and from 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. due to me still wanting at least some free time. Now, on this day, my train ran a bit late, so I was rushing to open up my shop. It was a Friday, and that is usually one of the more hectic and busier days. Many students of my dad and members of the club wanted to check out the new batch of tennis rackets and clothes we got from the firm we work closely with, and they wanted to try them out. Most of them were very understanding though, and I knew them all by name, at least most of them. After opening up the shop, letting them in, and having them look around and helping out wherever I could, I went over to this one woman and child who I hadn't seen before in the club or shop. We shall name the mother Tanya due to me knowing more entitled Tanyas than Karens. The conversation went like this. Hi, how may I help you, mom? Why didn't you help me before? Where were you at 5 p.m.? God, no one can do anything correctly here. And letting someone so young here serve? They should be ashamed. 
I was personally very confused, and a few other regulars were as well, since they knew I might get a panic attack and that I was the son of the coach here. I, I am very sorry, mum. I couldn't be here earlier due to- I don't want to listen to your poor excuses. Give me one of those rackets and give me a 50% discount. I looked up at where she was pointing, trying to calm myself down from this stressful situation. She was pointing at the most expensive and newest racket we just got today. I then looked at the child, who couldn't be older than 10. Mom, is this for you or your daughter? For my daughter, of course. Just give me that racket so I can leave. I know the owner since I'm his daughter. I was very, very confused at that point. Since, well, I didn't know I had another sister who was, well, around 30 years older than me. Mom, I'm asking because I need the correct hand size for the grip and weight. I tried to explain how important this was due to it being a major problem giving people a tennis arm, which basically means pulling a muscle, straining your wrist too much, and just being in pain. I go crouch down and politely ask the girl to put her hand against mine to see the size, ask her age, and how long she's been playing for. All the normal questions you get if you went to a good sports store. Tanya, who was next to us, started rolling her eyes and making clicking noises with her mouth and other noises that indicated she was being impatient. The next thing I knew, she was grabbing my hair and pulling me up. Just give her the goddamn racket. This should be free due to me being the daughter. I saw my opportunity and knew I couldn't wait any longer. The other customers in the store looked at us quietly and started smirking. I nod my head and go to the back door, which leads right to the tennis court where my dad is. So I yell, Dad, your lost daughter turned up. He looked at me confused, but I made some eye movements, indicating we had a weird woman in the store. He nodded and came in. Ah, so you're my long-lost daughter. I didn't know I got my old classmate pregnant back when I was in school. That is when everyone started laughing. Yeah, Dad, I didn't know I had a sister. When were you going to tell me I had an older sister? To be honest, I didn't even know I had a girlfriend at the time. The woman's look on her face was priceless. It went from confused to angry to very, very embarrassed. All whilst everyone in the store and her own daughter were laughing. She huffed and stormed out of the store, basically dragging her kid behind her by her hand. Since then, I've never seen her. I just don't get this play at all. When would that ever work? If this person, who is clearly lying about knowing the owner, doesn't know the owner, why does she think that the person working at the store isn't going to know the owner? This is just a small tennis club, right? It's actually extremely likely that an employee would know the owner. So I don't know what sort of chance she thinks she has lying about knowing the owner to try and get some free stuff. Maybe at a bigger store, perhaps it might work. But even there, you're likely to know the owner of the store, aren't you? If you work in the store, this is just never, ever going to work if you're lying about it. Surely. I mean, if I went into a hundred stores just on my local high street and said, I know the owner, can I have some free stuff? And how many do you think they'd actually go, oh yeah, I believe you. Zero? One? Maximum? It's never ever going to work. I don't understand the logic. Just buy a tennis racket and get out of there. And now moving on to our final story of today's episode. Entitled parents have slight meltdown in the ER. For some background, I'm a male nurse and I work in the emergency room of a medium-sized hospital. I mostly work nights. In Germany, you get more money when you work night shifts because the time and night shifts are longer than normal day shifts. We work three different shifts. Morning from 5.30 a.m. to 2 p.m., day from 11.30 to 8 p.m., and the night shift from 7 p.m. to 6 a.m. So I've got some stories, and at night, the real stuff happens. Oh, and all this happened pre-COVID, so no masks, visitors are allowed, yada yada. So that night, I worked at the front desk, mostly doing admission of patients, handling their healthcare IDs. We have universal healthcare, suck it, America, okay. And well, just manning the reception. This was, I think, around 1 a.m., so the ER was relatively empty. At night, there are like three hours where nothing really happens. So yeah, I sat there, sipping my third cup of coffee and chatting with a fellow nurse. Then the entitled parents arrived. I didn't see them coming. Excuse me? There they were. A thing I only knew from the internet. A Karen in Germany. Dang. She had a typical haircut and that I'm better than you vibe. In tow, she had a man who seemed pretty normal. Oh, sorry. How can I help you? The perfect customer service smile. Uh, yeah, I need to see my daughter. Her sister texted me that she's here. Her name is blank. So I looked her up on the database. 
Ah, yes, she's been admitted here. Well, then what does she have? Can I see her? Now, I have to explain. We've got some privacy law here in Germany. So if you're legally an adult, 18 and over, you have full privacy. And without your consent, I can't give anyone any data. Not the parents, siblings, not the significant other, not the kids, nobody. So I say, sorry, I can't give you patient's data. That's against the law. Yeah, but we're her parents and she's our child. Well, she's 18, so she's an adult. Without her consent, I can't tell you anything. But I can call the doctor she is seeing and ask. Hmm, fine, but make it quick. She was tapping her feet on the ground. So I took the internal phone from the desk and made the call. The daughter informed the doctor that she doesn't want her parents there and denied them any information. That is her choice. I'm sorry, but your daughter denied you any information. I relayed to the family. What? The meltdown is about to start. I'm her mom. Bring me to her now. Mom, please lower your voice. This is a hospital. Yeah, and I want to know where my daughter is. I'm her mother. She should share everything with me. I don't need you to find her then. She then passes the desk and goes in the direction of the treatment rooms. Hey, you can't go in there. I get reinforced with another male nurse and a male nursing student and block her way. All this commotion had attracted the attention of the attending ER doctor. He stormed out of his office. Our night doc is a good doc, but well, he has a temper. What is going on here, dang it? The Karen then looks smug. Oh, good, a doctor. These men are blocking our way to our daughter. She must be so scared to be alone here and we need to comfort her now. Now, the attending doctor luckily didn't take her rubbish. So, OP, her daughter? Yes, uh, she's here with Dr. Y. Now, she is 18 years old and denied this visitor any information about her health. Liar, our daughter is only 16. Yeah, well, listen, lady. The attending doctor crosses his arms. I believe this guy here slightly more than you. If you proceed to invade this space where only patients and staff are allowed, I'll have you escorted out. You can wait in the waiting room. The husband then got involved, and he was smug like his wife. What are you gonna do? Have the security throw us out? Nope, I'll do it myself, if you're not leaving this instant. At this point, Karen probably saw that she had the chances of a popsicle in hell. I'm gonna sue this hospital. I know the management. She stomps out with her husband in tow. The attending doctor said to me, if she shows up again, call security immediately. Well, lucky enough, Karen never came back that night. Her daughter needed to see a gynecologist that night about something with her lady parts. She told me, I escorted her out like at 3am, that her parents went nuts every time about things like this, how they hate her boyfriend and claim she is too young to date. I assured her that they won't get any data from us and that she can always come here. We are servants to the community. Just thinking about it, guys, I'm actually so happy that this is like how the law, how the rules of information work when you're in certain countries. I know it's the same in the UK and I presume it's the same in America as well, although I'm not sure on that one. Let me know. Just, you know, the right to, to, you know, have your information kept private when you turn 18 is massive because imagine, you know, in this situation, if her parents had found out about it and the girl didn't want them to know, that would just be, you know, pretty unfair because, you know, not everyone has great relationships with their parents and a lot of people go through stuff like this or go to hospital and don't want their parents or family knowing. And it's great that they don't have to know and that they're not allowed to know even when they come to the hospital and try and force their way in to find out the information. It's great stuff and privacy is obviously very important. So um, yeah, it's good to see that this is a rule. Oh, actually, I'm just reading a comment. You have similar privacy laws in America. As a matter of fact, I'm not sure ER staff would even be able to confirm the daughter was there without a permission. That's very interesting. Oh, and they continue. I know for a fact patients' names are never on the hospital website. Wow. So maybe even one step further because yeah that's a very good point i mean now that the parents know that their daughter is in the hospital i mean they could like realistically just wait outside for her or something or, or just get really creepy about it so yeah maybe you need to go one step further germany like america and keep it even more private anyway guys that is going to do it for this special episode of r slash entitled parents really hope you enjoyed it i mean if you are still about right now you're still watching still listening then i, I hope you did otherwise you have just wasted three hours of your life um and that's on you I, I can only say that. If you want more from me right away, check out some more videos on screen and in the description down below. And I'll see you all tomorrow with a brand new Reddit episode.